Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first live stream marathon of the entire Ultimate Cell Defense Championship Season 1. Uh, actually, I have not watched all the episodes one by one uh, myself yet, so I'm excited. And I'm going to be joined by co-host Jeff Phillips, who will be here in a moment. And also myself, if you don't know, I'm a contender of the series, the Aikido guy, if you can call that, <laughs> if you can call me that. And I'm also the co-creator of USDC, uh, Rokus Leo. Uh, we also may have a couple of the participants join us uh, during the live stream, uh, not for the entire thing, but just for some special moments, like special guest appearance. I won't say who that will be, but there are a couple of them are planning to join us. So the way this is going to work, we're going to watch all the episodes one by one. And me and Jeff Phillips, we're going to comment and share some of the behind the scenes, cool things that happen, some of the reflections. And uh, also after the episode will end, after each episode, we'll open up the Q&A, live Q&A from you guys. And there's the chat. You can write your questions then, because if you're going to write them now, we're not going to see them because they're going to get uh, burdened by the other comments. But once the Q&A opens up between episodes, uh, you can ask your questions. We'll answer a few. Go to the next episode, comment on that, come back to the live Q&A, and just go back and forth until we'll finish the entire thing, and then do some more live Q&A. Uh, so the... Only other thing that I wanted to mention, you'll see this thing going on the, on the background, like on the bottom. So season two crowdfunding is still ongoing. Now, first of all, the season two crowdfunding did reach its goal. It's hurrah. Thank you so much, everyone. It means a lot to me. The fact that we reached it so quickly, like in a week, that just blew my mind, made me super happy. As some of you know, I personally financed uh, most of the first USDC it was a huge financial strain. I came back with my, like an empty bank account. It was worth it. It was great, but it was stressful. Uh, but now having you guys have our backs uh, makes a huge difference. But the crowdfunding, despite reaching its goal, it's still ongoing because uh, 25,000, for me, that's in euros. The currencies are different. Actually, in Thailand, my brother lives in Thailand. He said it's a 1 million bot local currency. So we got 1 million, guys. <laughs> so different currencies are different. But uh, the 25K thousand euros, it's just the bare minimum. Also, a portion of that will be counted off by tax. So I won't be receiving the whole thing. We actually reached already more than 25K. But uh, that's the bare minimum, meaning that's not everything we yet need. That's how much we need to make sure we pull this off. But the more money we will collect, the more we can invest into new participants, more participants, more staff, better equipment, better props. And maybe we'll share a little bit more about Season 2 at the end of this whole thing. But if you want to support Season 2 still, and if you want to see it early, uh, earlier than everyone else, because that's the main perk of, on top of other perks, uh, you still have the option. So no pushing. We're already set. We're good to go. But in case you want to support it, that's definitely an option. And uh, so myself, I have some wine. Uh, I didn't have beer, so I'm going to go for wine. I have my Batman cup and some coffee. So I'm ready. And let's get Jeff Phillips, the co-host uh, here as well. And we're going to start this in a moment. Hey, Hello. Jeff. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I... Yeah. I didn't tell me that it was informal. I was <laughs> yeah, I, I see you. On. You dressed up for the occasion. I like that. Now yeah. I feel bad. I didn't. <laughs> uh, so uh, just to let everyone know, by the way, so so I'm in Europe, uh, this unknown country, Lithuania. So for me, it's 2.30 p.m. In the States, it's like 7.30 and even earlier, depends on where you are. And for you in Sydney right now, it's 9.30 p.m., right? Yes, yes. And these days, I don't stay up very late. Oh, so you cross to me a little bit later and I'll be snoring, but I'll, <laughs> I'll do my best to avoid that. Yeah, but I really appreciate you still doing this because this is the time when it's like the quote unquote perfect, as perfect as we can for yeah. the States being early enough, Europe yeah. being the perfect time and then Australia being late so we can yeah. get everyone together. So I really appreciate you uh, staying up late tonight to, to do this. Uh, so last question before we go to episode one, uh, do you have your favorite episode? My favorite episode? Oh, like, I like them all for a different reason. Yeah. I, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite, if I'm honest. Like, yeah, I, yeah they, they all had good points. Um, 
yeah, I, I really can't separate them. How about yourself? Yeah, I, I'm thinking both in both terms as an editor, like as an editor slash viewer and as a participant. For a participant, it would be a different answer. But for as a viewer, yeah. I probably liked an editor. I liked the zombie episode probably the most because of, you know, how... But just, I guess that's my personal achievement feeling of there's so much details there, like the music and the jump scares and the story. It just came so well together uh, yeah. that I, I'm just kind of proud of it as an episode. Yeah. But I'm proud of every episode. Like, I'm like, I was editing it. And I was like, oh, this is such a cool moment. And this is such a cool yeah. moment. There's a lot of cool episodes. And, and maybe, yeah. I don't know, for me, as a participant slash viewer, maybe episode two, you know, I had this underdog moment of coming above and... So yeah, there, there's, but there's, you're right. There's so many special moments. They're all brilliant. Uh, I think yeah. they all turn out brilliant. Yeah, you so. did, did a job. Like I just, it's amazing. The job you did was. Uh, Thank you. And yeah. actually one last thing for the audience, because not everybody yet knows. Some people probably don't even know who I am or who you are, <laughs> but uh, so Jeff, you are the mastermind behind all the challenges. I knew had limited information about it as a participant. But uh, a lot of people are like, oh, who, who came up with these brilliant challenges? And everyone, you're looking at the man right now. So, so I'm sure you can uh, guide us through and tell us some fascinating stuff about the challenges as we're watching them too. Yes, yeah, for sure. I'll try not to put people asleep. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I, I'm sure everyone's going to be great. Okay, so let's start with episode one. So, uh, I'll start off by saying some of the well, editing stuff. So, the idea to stop and say, I'm, you're probably wondering what's happening, that's actually Seth's idea. He, he suggested that to me, and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So, so I jumped on it. Uh, what, what was your feeling watching the first episode uh, and the intro, uh, Jeff? Um, when I saw that and I saw the preview to it, I was just like, wow, this is beyond what my expectation yeah. The morning started with five of the six participants waking up in the There's a great sense facility really good. where they will be living together. I think you're cutting off a little bit, but hopefully that's going to be not a problem. But uh, yeah, I'll let you know if that happens again. So, I think we're good. So uh, yeah, uh, personally, it was funny because when I was editing this stuff, uh, a lot of people thought uh, that it's just going to be like a random YouTube video. And I knew from the get-go, I'm going to make this like like a proper reality TV show. And I remember when I sent the episode, the preview, like the first episode preview to all the guys, I think everyone was like, oh crap, this is much better than I expected. I'm like, hey, I knew this is going to be like this. And I, I realized, okay, people are underestimating the series. So, so I'm pretty happy it turned out. It surpassed the expectations. Yeah, and the story is going to be moving. Yeah. Right. And if they really? do, so they'll know where they're going to convince the bus tell driver tell to like, sling us around the bus. So they're going to hit the brakes. I think you're cutting it. off. Uh, it's, it's the noise cancellation enough. setting on the microphone, it's says like MJ, because, so okay, you're hearing the episode at the same time, so we'll see if we can. Yeah, maybe if you turn off the sound a little bit of the episode, should be fine. So the bus thing, you did this often, right? This is not the first time you did it. I've actually got a room in the gym full of bus seats, if you would know. So for those who, who don't know, we have a room that I've purchased a whole heap of bus seats that are like a bus. So we do that training from top to We have done the bus stuff before, like once or twice. Um, and this was on another level just because the bus driver was so good. Yeah. Um, previously, oh, I guess to the, the location just made work. Back yeah. to, we could drive around without fear of getting in trouble, I guess, to some extent. Um, yeah, that, so that's actually, I'll jump in quickly. That's actually one of the uh, regrets I have about editing episode one is because the driver was a lady, like this uh, kind of senior lady and really cool, like really charismatic. But uh, I, we didn't get any proper footage of her, especially like her uh, talking. Uh, Gabby tried to film her, but eventually I didn't include her and I was like, Damn, I should have showed because now nobody knows that this was actually like this this elderly lady driving the bus like yeah. crazy. It, it was very cool actually. And she did a great job. Like she I think it was a little bit excessive, like the braking, but it was great. Like that's yeah. that's what happened. I just yeah. remember trying to film it and she'd hit the brakes and I'd nearly fall over. 
Yeah. And I just thought, oh, I'm going to have to do something because I'm going to end up falling over. So I had to push one, more or less what, what uh, Mike did when he was upside down, but I did it, pushed one foot into the seat in front of me to hold me back so that I didn't yeah. topple over. But yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was concerned about the filming as well. And we had the couple of camera guys, my wife Gabby was filming. And I was like, I was like, I wasn't sure how it's going to turn out, but I was like, okay, you know what? Because I was also a participant. So I was stressing about participating and needing yeah. to fight. I didn't have too much time to think about the filming. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to have faith. It's going to be fine. And uh, I just let it go, and it looks brilliant. I mean, we had like yeah. five cameras filming at the same time, so it was a lot of footage to work with. But yeah, I think the the camera people did a really good job. And this yeah. is uh, uh, yeah, this, yeah, this is my special moment. <laughs> so I was very happy. I didn't see it coming, but yeah. how how was it? Yeah, great. Sorry. I like for me organizing, doing what I did was tough. Like I was running around making sure everything was done and in the right places. But for you to do that as well as compete, like that, that's massive. That's a massive effort. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Now, as some of, you, some of the people already know, for season two, I'm planning to completely devote myself to directing and co-hosting with you. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a wild ride. But I wanted to prove I can fight. So, yeah, and you, so that, kick, yeah. that kick, by the way, uh, uh, Seth kicked me in the head. It wasn't like a hard kick and he was falling over, but still he, he touched me. Uh, yeah. So it's funny because you and I, we discussed that <coughs> kicks are not that common in buses. You don't yeah. see them usually. So what was your impression when you saw Seth nailing, uh, landing a kick? Yeah, I, I thought like it was impressive he landed it. Did it have hmm. much behind it? He was falling back. No, yeah. but yeah. And, and the thing is like, I know there'll be a discussion at some point about the protective equipment. It doesn't stop everything, as you know. Like, I've yeah. seen people KO'd with it on. So, if it was a good, solid kick, you would have felt it a little bit more than what you did. Yeah. Not, not to discredit the kick or anything, great, but um, yeah. put on him. Oh, like, it's, yeah, it was impressive. Yeah. Well, speaking of protection, uh, Mike should have been glad that we had cups here because I think this is going to be the yeah. infamous. Seth, uh, he landed some badass elbows too. Seth did an amazing job, by the way, in the bus bash. Like, I guess the sumo uh, training came in, his sight. And I didn't know that he was a, like a, a semi-professional football player. So yeah, yeah he's, he's you know, he was like a beast in the bus. He was scary to, to go again. Yeah. And also too, this is a moment a lot of people asked, you know, the police came over. So I do have to put it on, I do want to put it on record. We didn't have any trouble with the police. They just looked. <laughs> And they were fine because we were in a closed environment, like a campus, which no yeah. drug cars are driving. So, so, and you know the guys, right? So, so we didn't have to like go yeah. out and discuss. Because security came to have a look, and yeah. then I just called and said, "Hey, it's me." And they knew that we were filming, and they know that I do all kinds of stupid stuff. <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. And they, they told the police to. The police were just there. It was dog police, and they take their dogs on the walk them. Okay. Um, put off leash. You're not supposed to have them there, but they're the police, so they yeah, do what they. Yeah. But it's a good place to let their dogs run around and get some yeah. exercise. They, yeah. they, they were just there. They just yeah. to well, I'm I'm glad, as you said, like they're used to you doing crazy stuff all the time. So they were like, because everyone was like, oh, it must have been so crazy for the security guys to see this, and probably they're like, oh, it's another day with Jeff as a neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> After I told them, like, they were just like, oh, okay. And that was it. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, one more question. A lot of people, and uh, I I know that a lot of people had trouble with some of the judging, especially in the bus bash. I think there are some things we may tweak for, for season two, but at the same time, it's yes. just such a difficult job to do. And I wasn't part of the judging, but uh, how was it for you to watch, look at these fights and to judge them? What was your experience? Um, it's really difficult because... And I know this pops a bit of criticism. It's not scored the way that MMA or combat sports are scored. It's about damage. So it doesn't matter what position you're in. If you hurt the other person, then I guess essentially it's winning. So, um, and, and one of my books about MMA, particularly the, when Volkanovski lost, was the guy had superior position, but he didn't do it. And I mean... You know, I, I didn't want lay and pray to score points on my watch. Like you got to have, you got to earn it. And there were a lot mm -hmm. of fights where there were two hits landed, two, 
at or none of any significance. So we couldn't really award a winner if no one really got hurt. So that's why there was a lot of draws and people going, oh, cues aside, but yeah. look at the logistics. And when you're actually there, you see a whole lot more. And that's the thing that people don't realize. Like some of the hits weren't as significant. Others were more significant. Right. Yeah. You have to concentrate there. Is yeah. it perfect? No. Um, is it, are we liable for human error? Absolutely. But I think we did a pretty good job overall. Yeah. You know, it's actually a good point. And I, something I actually even forgot while, you know, I was so focused on editing each episode and I would just forget the previous one afterwards. But with the Buzz Bash, actually, these fights are heavily edited, like in order to make them entertaining. And especially like yeah. episode one for me, a priority was to make sure that it's fast paced, it's exciting, yeah. especially to get like the general viewer interested. <laughs> And then I start to pace the episodes more and show more behind the scenes. I don't think I'll have to do that for season two, which is great. But then for season one, I felt like I needed to do it. And uh, so these fights, I really like, when nothing's happening, I'm mostly just cutting it out. And there's some moments where people are stalling. And especially like there are some fights which lasted, I think, a minute, especially the first ones. Yeah. And uh, and not everything made it into the cut. And as, you're, as you said, like when you're looking at it live, it's probably a different experience than from what the viewer sees. So that makes it more confusing as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. The thing about uh, it is the rules were not changed on the spot. The only thing that we changed on the spot was the timing of this because it started out initially as one minute rounds. And then I realized how heavy everyone was breathing. And it was like, by the time everyone fights everyone, the last fights are going to be so sloppy and clumsy because everyone's so fatigued that we had to shorten. Yeah, I mean, also uh, to remind everyone, and maybe not everyone realizes, this was a Tuesday, and we had three challenges in a row, like uh, side by side. So, so we had this one, then we did the circle drill in about an hour, and then in about an hour we did the hiding <laughs> the stab. And hiding the stab, it's more cardio based. It's not as in intense. Like you don't fight that much. I mean, unless you're Icy Mike or Jeff Chan and you do flying kicks. But uh, but yeah, we still had two huge challenges ahead of us. So so I think you were very smart to make sure that we don't get exhausted. Yeah, then you guys decided to spar until like 1, 2 a.m. after all that. So yeah, <laughs> be a little bit because, you know, when I saw that you guys are still up sparring at 2 a.m. instead of going and resting and recovering, I'm thinking, you know, I'm a little bit that he took after yeah. that. So. Yeah, but I think we were just all excited. By the end of it, we were all so exhausted. But at the same time, we we're so excited to be with each other. You know, we we're seeing each other for the first time and we wanted to film videos together, experience each other in sparring. Yeah. I think that just drove, you know, when you're sometimes tired, but something yeah. exciting happens and yeah. it just drives you. I think we had a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, speaking about the fight, so this is Seth and uh, Matt. Again, Seth yeah. is a beast, man. <laughs> but. Like he's uh, when I heard he played D2 football, he yeah. was just my ranking. Like, initially, I didn't know too much about Seth. I didn't know how big he was, and I'm thinking, oh, he, he does karate. He'll be able to kick, but there'll be, you know, things lacking in his game. But then when he said he used to play D2 football, I was like, oh, hang on a sec. And so he just went and jumped up so many notches. Yeah, yeah. No, he was, he was really great. And, you know, the crazy thing with Seth is that uh, a little bit like myself, but he has more experience. But in my channel, I present myself as the journeyman, as the guy you know, yeah. who's who's learning, who's always the underdog. And a lot of times that's true. You know, if I hang out with champions, of course, I'm not at their level. But also people start to underestimate and think, oh, okay, so this guy, is, you know, he's lame. And especially like, you know, the people who don't coordinate very considerate. And I know, speaking with Seth, that that happened to him as well, because he presents himself as the student in his videos, people underestimate him and think, ah, you know, he's this goofball. But then Seth, yeah. he's, he's a beast. He's, he's, he's awesome. He yeah, he has very good film. Yeah. And this fight too, with between Seth and Jeff, I think it was a close one. Like yeah. Jeff was so uh, technical, but then Seth is so good at using his weight and pressure. It's just like, yeah, it was, it was intense. Yeah. And did any of the fights uh, surprise you during uh, the bus bash? Um, if I'm honest, um, I think I was surprised at Matt's performance because Matt, Matt's normally ultra aggressive. Like Matt is the guy that can flick the switch from, you know, just talking normally to bang. He's ultra aggressive and mm. he didn't do that. Like he didn't do that. So, you know, granted, he didn't 
train for a while. And I also think perhaps the, the event got to him a little bit. Like, it, it made him more nervous than he normally is. Because... Right, yeah, he spoke about that. Like, the cameras and, uh, you know, the other guys being there, the guys that, you know, he knows of. So I guess, yeah, it all came together. Throughout. Yeah. Yeah, because Matt, like, Matt started training with him. I think he was 15 or 16. Like, I, I still remember when he came in. And he won me over once because he had this really big sort of bodybuilder guy. Um, he was huge. He was probably about 120 kilos, and he was very athletic as well. And we are doing the circle drill. We, we've done this the circle drill for years. I think it's a really good, like, drill to, to learn, you know, um, I guess it's an open uh, open drill as opposed to a closed drill. Like, there's so many variables that can happen. And this one day, this big guy was in the middle, and he was a relative beginner. The training with beginners is tough because they're not as coordinated, they're not as controlled. He was hitting people very hard. So there's probably about 15 people around this guy taking turns attacking him. And then after the regular guys went in and this guy sort of hit him fairly hard, the majority of the other people sort of took a backward step. And Matt, as a 15-year-old, was looking around, you know, and everyone was hesitant to jump in. And Matt just jumped in and lit this guy up. And that's when he won me over. I was like, man, this guy, he can go. And he was 15 at the time. He was a kid. Hmm. Um, and he won me over. Like, it was just, yeah, Matt's Matt's got some skill. And I just yeah. think, yeah. You think he didn't do as well as he normally does, right? Yeah, yeah. I think although, the, although a lot of people are still impressed with Matt. They were, they were actually, yeah. they, 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 they found him great. Too bad he's yeah. not running his channel anymore. No. Uh, just, tried yeah. to get him to do that. Uh, not interested. Yeah. yeah. So uh, while we have the short break in between episodes, I'll pop up some comments. So feel free to ask yeah. questions uh, and we'll look at them. Yeah. And I just wanted to share one that the famous uh, best actor in the world, MJ, is with us. So that's the original, the yeah. one and only MJ. And MT. she is. Sorry? It's MT. MT. She just got married. So. Oh, shoot. <laughs> but she's still. So we call it that's... Empty. <laughs> but she still has the MJ here. So uh, she says, we need a challenge where you get the contestants drunk and then see who, how well they will fight. I'd love that. I was, and we were actually, yeah. Jeff, you and I were discussing yeah. about the possibility of that. There's a lot of concerns. Like my main concern is uh, more people are more, more prone to injury because they're not as coordinated yeah. and uh, they can hurt each other and we don't want that. Uh, also, not everybody's a drinker. People yep. uh, handle alcohol, alcohol differently. Like for me, it takes a lot to get drunk. I hate it. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what are your thoughts about uh, getting everyone drunk? Uh, 100%. Like that was an idea that we've thought about many a time. It'd be a good bonding exper experience um, where everyone sits around and has a few drinks as well. And then we do the, the drills or even if we do them sober and... It's funny, on TikTok, I saw this um, woman drinking and she'd have a few drinks and she'd go, beer number, beer number three, and then she'd be beer four, and then she'd get to 12, 13, like it, it filmed her night. And I was thinking, you know, we could do a series of drills at, the, at beer number four, at beer number eight, at beer number 12, and see how it impairs, you know, how, how you perform. And like, if I'm honest, the majority of self-defense things that I've been in, or a large number have been when I've been consuming alcohol or other people have, you know, the alcohol fueled violence. So yeah, hundred percent. Like if season two, they're all drinkers, then let's do it. <laughs> I think, you know what we, what we may do. So this is definitely not <laughs> off the table. I think we may, when the participants get together, we may be, or before we meet together, yeah. we may actually talk about them with them. And as, as long as they consented and we we're not going to force everyone to do it, I won't be surprised if somebody doesn't want to take part of it and we don't need to get them super drunk, but, uh, yeah. but let's, let's keep it an, an open option. Yeah. And, uh, goggles would be more fun, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, because I've worn those goggles in the past for training. Like when I did yeah. the Cork and Batty's one, um, we had those goggles and I've never drunk that much that made my eyesight right. blue. Right. So it's not yeah. really patient, but yeah. it gives you, I guess. Right. Uh, a couple of comments more or questions uh, before we jump on to episode two. 
Uh, Tim is green is, is saying with each challenge, could we get a breakdown of useful and successful tactics? I got a lot of ideas on how to fight from the series, but it's hard with such limited data. I think one of the cool things is that uh, the guys are coming up uh, with the participants are coming up with their own videos, reaction videos. Like Mike yeah. has a one or two and Seth has released a couple and he's releasing is about to release one more where how he used, I don't know if this, this is a spoiler, but I, I think I can say it, that he's going to release how he used sumo in cell defense or in the ultimate cell defense championship. Uh, Jeff, you released one or two videos. I think you could release more where you're just breaking down because you've done these exercises yeah. for years. You have so much data yeah. and experience that I think you could share a lot of valuable information, which can't make the final cut because it's still, there's a balance between entertain, entertainment and education. But uh, are you thinking about making some, this is what works and this is what doesn't videos? Yeah. Like, I did one, and that's the thing. No one wants to watch my videos. I'm just bored. I don't have the charisma of you guys. So even if what I'm giving to the general public is a lot of knowledge, um, it doesn't – I'll do some, you know, and they'll probably get a 1,000 views, and, yeah, I'll do a couple. Yeah, but, um, okay. yeah the thing is um, when we talk about, you know, breakdown of tactics and things like that, like – um, to quote where this T-shirt sort of comes from, the movie Step Brothers, when they go in, they wear them to, to the job interview and they come in, <laughs> we're here to fuck shit up. That's all it is. Just beat the other person. Like, there's no science behind it. Just beat their ass. You know, you don't <laughs> have to. Like, that. that's, uh, like, people are, like, trying to read into things so deeply. Just win the fight. Like, it's not rocket science, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, you know that's what who wins the fight it's not like oh three points for an oma plata or you know you right. reverse that get bonus points win the fight like yeah yeah uh, I, I like that that's a good point because for me uh, i think there's a couple of bigger biggest takeaways for me from the season one direct experience and one is i keep saying that but uh we all came in knowing that size and strength matter but we mm. came out realizing it matters more than we expected. It's like, especially if you add skill to the equation, you're going to be a beast. It's like, it's undeniable. It's no wonder there's weight classes in UFC and everything. Uh, yeah. But the other thing is aggression. And especially at the final challenge, and we can look at it while we're, when we're watching this, the last episode. But uh, it's it just makes a big difference. And I think some of the participants... I don't necessarily need to even name names, but uh, they spoke about that themselves. Like, you know, I, I interviewed them and not everything made the final cut again. But some of the participants spoke that they said, you know, we're combat sports fighters, essentially. And and they were struggling because they're used to feeling out and, and you know, assessing. Yeah. And in a real fight, you won't necessarily be able to do that. You just like sometimes just need to let it go. And once I did add more aggression and and kind of just going all out, uh, of course, I think you still need to be smart, but at, at the same time, there's muscle memory, whatever that mean, means. But yep. it, you still have your skills. You still make these adequate decisions because you fight, you fought many times already. But then just going all out made such a better result for me than, you know, like, oh, how do I beat this guy and what strategy yeah. do I use? And I think that's yeah. one of your points too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because the other thing too that sort of I was going to do a video about because I think... I think two of the participants said when we say that you go 70%, they believe 70% is 100%, oh, yeah. but it's not. So 70% may be 100% in combat sports where you have to fight for 25 minutes, mm. but in self-defense, 100% is 100%. So that's why, like even Jeff in the, the shank tank, four 20-second rounds with a minimum of minute gap in between, and he was tired, and that's a super fit individual. So okay. it's a and that's the big difference like that people don't realize like that coasting and and i get my guys i got a couple guys that want to compete as well and one of the days a week i get them to stand there and swing for the fences and throw shots as hard as they can and you know do like a tabata round and it, and it wears them out like it's a it's a whole different animal and that's the thing that intensity yeah. um that's what's lacking in a lot of people's training like yeah. um yeah it's you know there's there's something as well Jeff Chan said and Mike was uh, I see Mike was commenting on I, I don't remember if this made the final cut but uh, Jeff Chan was saying that he was sore and tired yeah. and he was kind of surprised because he said the intensity 
physically, it wasn't as intense as what he's used to when he's going through fight camp. He trains more and yeah. he does more, but he was yeah. more tired here because there's the unpredictability element. There's so many variables. There's so many unknowns. And I think, you know, the body tenses up more when there's the unknown. So, so yeah. But yeah. just uh, before we continue, just want to make sure, you know, we still have a lot of time yeah. to go through. So I'll just pop in one more question that we can cover quickly and then go to episode two. Uh, so there's the uh, question of if there's any chance knife defense scenario would simulate a dirty fighting for season two, eye gouging, throat strikes, etc. So I know you spoke about a little bit like the dirty fighting and how that applies to that type of training. Can you uh, enlighten us? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a tough balance because I guess as soon as you put MMA gloves on or any glove on, people tend to punch. It, mm. It's just a subconscious thing that as soon as you put gloves on, people start throwing punches. Um, the other thing too is it's really hard under that intensity for the attacker to acknowledge when they're getting eye gouge. And that's mm. the thing. If you don't have that intensity, it's not real. It's, not, it's nowhere near the ballpark. So it's kind of tough to do. And then, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, do you really need the helmets? Well, we're not going to, you know, eye gouge people and do those kinds of things um, or throat strikes, like they potentially, they can be potentially lethal. Maybe not to the extent that people say, but they can be. And let's just like be honest, like if someone sticks a thumb in someone's eye and rakes it, um, it's not worth risking someone's sight over A, yeah. training, B, a competition. It's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's yeah. bigger things at stake than... Yeah. I'm, I'm also thinking, I think that's one of the cell defense experts I spoke to some years ago, but uh, I think essentially the point was if you can beat someone without dirty fighting, you will be able to do the same with dirty fighting. So it's not like, you know, that's like... The, a, only, yeah. yeah, my only sort of criticism of that is is that a lot of people also say that, hey, I do BJJ. Now, if you eye gouge me when I'm, I'm on the ground, I can eye gouge you back. But the person who does it first will generally win. Yeah. You know, if I put my thumb in someone's eyeball... Um, they're not going to think about returning it to me. They're in a world of hurt. And I should then have that advantage and that should see me yeah. through. So it's a little bit, you should train it, yes. And we train it. But for the nature of the competition, it's really hard to register that. Like, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things that people have spoke about that are really hard to, to register. Like the shank tank, they're like, oh, you know, those knives aren't penetrating. If a knife penetrates and gets stuck between two ribs, you can't pull it out as easy. Please tell me how we can simulate that because I have no idea. <laughs> we'll you know, think like, about it. We'll think about it. <laughs> unless we strap stakes to people and give them yeah. knives. Like, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's we'll a fine line it. between yeah. safety and, and yeah. training. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's training is still training, but, yeah. but it's the best we can do. Yeah. Uh, okay. So to make sure we don't go until morning. <laughs> for you yep. i will drop the second episode uh in cool. about now let me just sound so this is the f infamous moment of everyone yeah. jumping in the bus we did not know it i did not know it's coming what was the idea behind it what was your what was happening in your brilliant um, dangerous mind <laughs> yeah like on the bus everyone's sitting there fighting one another preparing oh i'm gonna have to fight X yeah. person X to think my strategies when I fight them. We wanted to take that out because I guess, like I said in that episode, self defense happens like that. You know, there's no preparation. You just have to act pretty much on autopilot. And I wanted to get that sort of feel to it as well. So I just wanted to, you know, have that unknown, that uncertainty, and have the guys run on and just try and get you in that self defense framework where a lot of people get in the situation and can't process it in time like you have to process it instantly and then respond and that's what i wanted to do just get you in that ah oh, ah oh, now what do i do and then see how quickly you respond and yeah yeah, you got yeah. Pretty well. these were some big shots like alex um it looks great on camera <laughs> that's the moment by the way yeah yeah i and i'm gonna go in defense of alex they sat hiding behind that bus all padded up for like 40 something minutes piping each other up um you know, they're all getting all pumped up and I guess sitting there for that long and by the time it all happened, you know, Alex is ready to ready to let fly and frustrated and probably hungry. I get it. I get it. 
Yeah, but there's also, you know, there's the adrenaline and uh, yeah. I, I, I definitely think it, it wasn't personal because like, Alex was a great guy all, all together. Like, you know, he was yeah, so yeah. nice and that was kind of strange because when he would be attacking, he would be kind of half swinging. And yeah. and then, you know, afterwards he's like, hey, is everything OK? And you're like, whoa, is that the same dude? What is that same dude? So, yeah, but uh, I think, you know, when you go to a gym and you spar someone, I always, especially in MMA or like boxing, I'm always more careful sparring the guy for the first time because there's yeah. the shots can be harder because there's the adrenaline you don't know if the other guy is going to hit you harder you, you kind of want to prove something maybe sometimes like that you don't suck and it's maybe subconscious but just so many elements psychological but anyway yeah. just yeah but and also yeah you know your you guys your reputations and things like that like he he came out thinking that yeah it was okay and you know he had to come and bring sort of his a game otherwise he right, would yeah. Yeah. So, there's a lot of factors and you know yeah. what let's be honest it made for good good viewing right Sorry, uh, so this is the moment when we uh, got together for the first time that actually happened on day one so before the buzz bash uh for me personally it was you know the main question is was it weird to meet everyone and i think i put that on record too it was it was kind of weird, but also that's the weird part because you meet those people and you've seen them so many times on the screen. You spoke to each other online that it feels like you knew them. It's like there's a little bit of this, oh my god, I'm meeting them. But then at the same time, you're like, hey, we know each other forever. So yeah. it's strange. How was it for you? Yeah, a little bit the same. Like, I'll be honest, though, I hadn't really known much about a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, so I. Yeah, it was just interesting. I, I just sat back. Like, I'm not in any of these shots because I'm just watching. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I just yeah, I just sat yeah. back and, yeah. and yeah. How So this we're here at the sponsor of the gear. Uh, I want to put on record that having Mike there was like the best gift ever because he just went yeah. wild. We didn't ask anyone to do anything. I thought we were just going to look nah. at some gear. And then Mike's like, oh, hit me with this. Break. Let's break this. I was like. I'm glad Mike is here. Seth was doing a great job as well. Everyone was doing a great job, but then Mike yeah. was just leading the show, and, yeah. and so many cool moments uh, came up from this. Uh, and that was yeah, good. That, for me. It was just an opportunity to try out the gear, select yeah. the best right for you. Um, they had such a massive selection that we could, you know, if what we had wasn't sufficient, we could go and change it. So it was a really good opportunity to have everyone fitted with the gear that they required, and um, yeah. 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 This this is actually we just missed that point, but then when all the guys come in, so we they attacked us on the bus, but it was so hectic we didn't have to a chance to register. But then uh, they started coming in through the door one by one, and they're all big guys essentially. They're all tall, and yeah. we were all like it felt like a, a clown car, you know, opens up tiny clown car, <laughs> and then the clowns just keep coming out. Like that was like that experience, and we we're like all you could see in the video, we were all a bit stressed, like. These guys are our attackers. So I don't know what's what's why are they all so big? Seth Seth asked that question. What's the answer? Um, <laughs> it's a shame because one of our instructors, Ben, hi Ben, um, make it, and Ben would be sixty-five kilos. So he, I really wanted him and Mike to sort of go mm. at it, similar size to Mike, similar background to Mike, where yeah. he was a for our police force and things like that, and a decorated cop. And, um, yeah, so we have a couple of small guys, but it just so happened the guys that were available were all pretty big. You know, yeah, and one of them yeah. seven. This guy here, George, is 47, 46, yeah. something like that. So it was yeah. a big mix. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeff here is essentially kicking ass. Please. And uh, uh, so that's the big question also that many had on mind. You know, there's the whole debate of, oh, an MMA fighter would suck at self-defense because they're trained <laughs> for the cage. And I think... Jeff proved many people wrong. I think still tweaking is important. Like he had some experience with multiple attackers, but like this episode is the first ever time that Jeff defended against a knife. And I do yeah. want to put on record that uh, Aaron, the attacker, the knife attacker, he was, uh, that's the way I see it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but he was kind of, he wasn't playing like an aggressive knife attacker. He was playing kind of a, I'm a drunk kind of homeless person with a knife and he wasn't really going all out. There's a clear difference between like episode six, the Shank Tank, and the way yeah. uh, Aaron attacks here. But still, Jeff handled him pretty well yeah, and yeah. kicked ass again altogether. So, so what's did that kind of prove or disprove something for you? The fact that an MMA fighter was doing great in unpredictable no. attacks. 
No, because someone who trains to fight and at the level Jeff does mm. is obviously going to be better than a hobbyist that trains once, twice a week. Yeah. Uh, no, that's his livelihood. That's what he does. So he yeah. should do well. Um, if he tweaked it, like I guarantee he'll come out next time and he'll be better. Yeah. Because now yeah. he has more understanding of what to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I think. Yeah. Like, and the people who come to me from an MMA boxing whatever background normally excel. They're normally yeah. better. Yeah. That's what uh, uh, someone I know, uh, Paul Sharp, kind of a live su superhero, you know, former SWAT member, uh, like undercover police officer in Chicago, one of the you know terrible cities. So I was talking to him and, and I was asking him at the beginning of my self-defense journey, not knowing what's what, I asked him, so, so what's the whole thing, sports versus street debate? And he said, If you get somebody who knows how to fight and you tweak a little bit, like like if you get a random person from the street uh, into a seminar, like a self-defense seminar, they'll come out better, but they won't come out like significantly better after weekend. Uh, yeah. Like they won't come dramatically better. But then if you get a fighter over the weekend, you can turn them into a complete killer because they already know how to handle themselves. They understand the body yep. mechanics. You just give them the right tools and then bam. And I think Jeff is a great example of that. And also, too, I just wanted to actually put on record that Jeff Chan, so he agreed to join season two to defend his belt. Super happy. I'm, I'm super happy. I'm super excited about it. But also he's <laughs> actually concerned that we have a lot of badass guys like a UFC fighter, a BGJ black belt. Like he's going to have a tough competition. So he's not so certain he's <laughs> about himself. But I was telling him he's been through this experience already once. Uh, I have a feeling he'll have an edge. What do you think? Yeah. And I think there, there's some guys that are really good coming out this time as well. Yeah. And so it's going to be interesting to see. He, he will have a slight edge. But having said that, th these guys would have watched the videos. True. Uh, They'll be more aware be, than, yeah. But if it matters to them, They'll adapt their training. True, and, true, true. Uh, like Nathan yeah. Le Levy, Levi, Levy, whatever. Um, you know, he lives in Israel, so he can go and get some crowd guard people to try and stab him and show him some true, things as true, well. True, true. Um, so depending on how serious they are, they can, yeah, yeah go and work on some things. and. Yeah. Yeah, but very, definitely, Jeff Chan will definitely have a tough competition, that's for sure. Or, yeah, like it's... Yeah. Uh, Somewhat worried about my guys going up against the. Uh, oh yeah, I thought about uh, the two. I'm like, oh. but they're all cool guys. They're all cool guys. Like they're all yeah, like, you know, <laughs> decent guys. Two of my regulars will be back as well, so nice. Uh, we will have a couple others as well, different sizes. So yeah, yeah. but you, you, your guys will also know better what to expect as well. They've they've been through this once as well. They had Jeff Chan. They had Seth. Yep. So yeah, yeah, and oh. they've been quite hard of late. Yeah. They've been sparring and nice. yeah, they, they they did a. Yeah. I sat there. Uh, eight rounds or something and it was impressive nice a uh, quick question so seth here struggled especially during the multiple attackers he he actually honestly wanted to quit like he's not pretending yeah. on the camera he didn't but but we spoke with each other uh, off the record and, and he said he was honestly considering quitting uh what do you think did do you think he made a, a fundamental mistake here in the way he approached this whole thing that he was so close to giving up um i think it's the intensity You know, the, the the sprint intensity, it's anaerobic, which I guess Sumo is as well. Um, but I don't know. I just, maybe it was a fitness thing. I'm not too sure. But he seemed to do okay in everything else. But um, Yeah, no, he's, he's a fit guy for sure. You know? yeah. yeah. Like, I think, too, one after the other like this is tough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was weird because for me, like, uh, I'm going to come up soon enough, but... Uh, My strategy was, so from the get-go, uh, I actually lost my cardio too many times while fighting, like you know, yep. combat sports fighting. And so I became much more conscious about energy preservation. And even when I came here, everyone came exhausted. So I was like, this is a funny moment, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Mike uh, making fun of Jeff. But uh, I wanted to, I was very sure, like, I will try to use as little energy as possible. And by the end of it, I was like, I was fairly fine. So I was like, Why yeah, are you all together, guys? are tired, but I was part lucky, and I don't, I don't know. But I think, yeah, Seth maybe had. I think the problem is maybe with the circle drill or the challenges, which also Mike had. If you spend too much time in one of these, yeah, you get, you spend out all of your energy, and then you still have so many goals. Because for me, I was lucky that 
I was able to go through them. I didn't spend too much time in any of them. Yeah. But 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 like Seth spent so much time just struggling with two guys and he just throwing them. It's just like like going back and forth. Mike as well like struggled to to finish those things, you know, these sessions. And I think that just exhausted them and then they still had to go over themselves. I think maybe that's you agree, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um particularly if depending on how your first couple go, like if your first one's a big challenge where you know, it takes you a minute or two minutes to solve it. That's like a full round, you know, in a boxing bout or whatever. But yeah. with all out intensity. So that's enough to sort of start behind the eight ball. Yeah. There's yeah. this moment actually, uh, because it was kind of a controversial moment, I, yeah. I want to say my thoughts about it. You know, the Ramsey's helmet turned and uh, the judges decided to not continue. My, I never spoke about it to anyone, but my impression from being there was that Ramsey got hit already quite a few times in the head. And yeah. I think the judges just didn't want him to get hurt anymore. And that's why they stopped it. Do, do you yeah. think that was the case? There were two reasons. Number one, if you watch it in slow motion, there's close to 10 unanswered shots. Mm. Now, if that happened in a boxing bout, you know, 10 unanswered shots or someone's ground and pounding, yeah. they'll stop it. You know? And the other thing if you factor in as well, the surprise element is now gone. So if right. you're like, oh, let's do it again, then he knows it's coming. Um, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it was the right decision. I stand yeah, by right. Also, too, I don't know if that's fair to say, but actually some of the guys also had their helmets turn and they just kept going. <laughs> like Jeff Chan like, had some moments where he's not seeing anything and he's just still going. So I guess, you know, I, I think, you know, I understand why people are criticizing that moment or they're unhappy, but... I think it's important to look at both sides. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not saying the judges are wrong. I think it's, you know, the middle is, is the right place to be. Yeah. Uh, so Ramsey was the first one to do the brilliant uh, knife giving your wallet thing. Actually, I will come on record and I will say I will. I was a little bit upset. I won't swear right now. But because everyone in the comments, because Ramsey did it first. Matt did it as well. I did it as well. But everyone in the comments like, oh, Ramsey's so smart. He gave the wallet. And I'm like... We did too, but everyone's yeah. just talking about Ramsey. I was a bit upset yeah. about that, but that's kind of half joke. Uh, did you expect someone to give their wallet? Were you hoping yeah, that yeah. I knew Matt would because that's one thing we, we sort of train a lot. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. Nobody else watched anyone else fight. So it was a first for everyone. So yeah, you all did it at the same time. Yeah. And you know that thing there in this particular fight? That bat, if that hits you across the face, it's it will hurt a hell of a lot. It's not soft. Um, yeah, it yeah. was just Alex wasn't swinging at it with everyone. He kind of uh, was. Adrian. Sorry, Adrian. He was, you know, flailing it across in front of people and giving them an opportunity to exploit yeah. that. Like all these attacks, um, they were flawed attacks for the most part. There were opportunities for people to get the upper hand in all of them. You know, there was no no-win situations. They were flawed attacks. Like, particularly the choke. The guy who did the choke, Sam. Hey, Sam. Um, he did not lock it up. He's a strong dude. And if he grabs you, yeah, it, 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 he's strong. But to be honest, a week out, he didn't know how to do a choke. And we'll teach him a rear naked choke. And then he kind of looked a bit clunky. And then I thought, you know what? We're better off just going with a clunky choke that is flawed because... If we're training for some person in the pub, it's not going to be a, a perfect choke. So we kind of did it way and deliberately, and yeah. it was a choke. It was, uh, a lot of the attacks were flawed. So yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's where next season maybe we shouldn't be as nice. Uh, I don't know. I'm <laughs> we'll we'll of, discuss. I think there's going to be a lot yeah. of discussions. And for example, I see in the comments there's uh, people are right now discussing about uh, different colored clothes. So the thing is, we had yeah. T-shirts ordered. They came in on Wednesday. So for two, this is where right now what we're watching was Tuesday. So we're with yes, with black T-shirts. So that wasn't great. But even still, I think we're we're already to just to let everyone know we're considering about uh, spray painting the helmets with different colors, adding different color shorts, uh, making sure the T-shirts stand out even more. Like we're gonna learn a lot of things from season one and we're gonna make season two so much better. So so don't yeah. worry about it. It's on our list of things to do for sure. And oh and yes. Fun. Sorry. That, that video I did, the video I did where I'm explaining the rules that I put out yeah. it goes for about 
five minutes longer where I actually answered the phone to the company that printed the shirts saying, your shirts are ready, come and get them. And I was on the phone to about yeah. during that explanation to the contest yeah. to, the, to the attackers working out what attacks to do. Yeah. Uh, quick one here. Uh, so this is one of the frustrating moments, which I fucking freaking hate. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I, I was like, I, I didn't expect myself to do so well. I did my best and then I didn't know how the other guys did. But by the end of it, I was like, oh, you did so great. I was like, oh, great. This, this is great. Then I looked at the video edit. I was like, wow, this turned out really good. But I was, I thought like, this is such a proud moment for me. You know, I proved to everyone I can fight. But then there are people who are telling like, oh, Rokas, they went easy on him because the, he's the co-organizer and he knew what's going to happen. So can you put it on record what really happened? <laughs> so, and if I'm being totally honest here again, if I was going to go easy on anyone, it would have been Matt. Because Matt, mm. even though he hasn't trained with us for a couple of years, kind of represents us, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, there was none of that. And even with Matt, I was like, you know, like the saying, true through combat. And this is where that I was kind of like, no, like we're, we're going to be the same for everyone. Even though like deep down, you know, I was hoping Matt would do as well as I know he normally would. Um, no one was given an upper hand. It just worked out the way it did. And you're two on one. The video doesn't do it justice because the two guys tripped over each other. Yeah. Uh, was, was it skill? Was it luck? Who knows? But you got through it. It was kind of like they fell to the sides and you went through the middle of them. It was yeah. just a moment where I was like, damn, like the, the stars aligned for you. We didn't align the stars. It just happened. And these guys, like they don't want to look like dickheads on, on camera anyway. They want to look like they can fight on camera as well. Sure. So they're not up. Like to, to say that you had an advantage was ridiculous. I, in fact, I go to so so far to say that you had the opposite because organizing as well, like you didn't have all that time to get your head in the game. You're yeah. thinking about camera angles and all that kind of thing. Then you just had to come and switch on. That's tough. So yeah, it's wrong. And that was cool. Yeah. That moment when I looked and I, I saw Gabby, um, the proud look on her face. Yeah. I was just like, that is that was one of my highlights of the whole thing. Just it's kind of cool, like. You know, if my wife Lisa, hey Lisa, ever looks at me with proud eyes like that, yeah. it's it, it's a beautiful moment, and that's yeah. what happened, and it was cool. Thanks, thank you for clarifying that, and, and to be to put it on record as well, I it was it was a very nice moment for me, and after I was I managed to do well in this uh, challenge, which which is one of the harder ones for sure. Uh, yeah. I I felt like great. This is what I this is what I wanted to prove because there's a lot of people, as I said, they still equate me with the Aikido guy and. And, you know, I still have some Aikido in me. I think actually Aikido helped me in the circle drill, but yeah. uh, they underestimate, I'm not saying I'm the best, but they underestimate the ability level that I, I am at. And once I performed well in this challenge, I thought, perfect. I already did what I came here to do. And yeah. even if I would have done not as well further, I was like, okay, I had my moment. And there were even more moments, which were great. So I'm happy. But but yeah, it was a special moment. As you said, when you mentioned that Gabby, my wife, was had that proud look on her face. That was a very special moment. I, I did my best to try to incorporate that in the editing and the storytelling to share that experience. So, Yeah, it was uh, a very cute. Yeah. Also, so Matt is up right now. And uh, I know you said Matt didn't do as well as he normally does and as in a way as you expected. But a lot of people were commenting and saying like, whoa, Matt is my favorite. Matt showed such great skills. Like he was the only one who ran away. Uh, so, I don't know, a lot of people loved what, how Matt performed here. So, what are your thoughts on Matt's performance in the circle drill? Yeah, really well. He's probably done this a hundred times at least. <laughs> uh, it's something that we do a lot. And granted, the attacks are always different, different orders, so many different things. Um, but, you know, he kind of knew what to expect. And I was surprised that he was, he said he was nervous because he's done this so many times. But I guess, you know, the cameras are on him and knows that so many people are going to watch it. It was good. But yeah, he did a lot of good things here. Um, we could have been strict on him and not giving him the point there. But the same could be said for when Jeff got stabbed, when yeah. uh, Ramsey and the bat sort of just laid on him. Like we, we could have been super strict on that. We did give some points. Um, the judges were a little bit lenient, I'll, I'll admit, uh, on, on occasion. But, you know, we, we weren't, I guess for the future, we should be super strict. You know, um, we wanted everyone to see, like, 
we didn't sit here and play favourites. We wanted everyone to do well and everyone to walk away with their head held high because to go in this tournament, like, it takes a lot of balls, you know. You're putting putting your reputation yeah. behind. So. Yeah, especially for people who are publicly known and they rely yeah. on that. Yeah, mm. definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, regarding the scoring and being more strict, I guess, you know, we spoke, you know, we spoke about this before, but we, we're a little, we're kind of like chill guys. We don't worry too much about stuff. We, we do our best to make things super good. But I think both of us came in kind of thinking, or, you know, uh, you feel free to disagree, but we were like, okay, the experience is what matters. The scoring, we're going to do it well, but we won't like stress about it. But now I think after season one, because the viewers are stressing about it, they're so concerned about each and every point i guess my takeaway is probably for season two just to respect that will be much yeah. more strict and much more precise and i think the scoring was good i don't think yeah. you know when i was looking for the whole thing i didn't have moments where i was like because i could always call you and say jeff you know i'm not happy about this but no, that never happened but still yeah. i think just to respect the viewers i guess we'll just we'll be super meticulous about the scoring for season yeah. two yeah you agree and also it's it's difficult to be um for it to be black and white, it's grey because, you know, here, for example, um, some of these shots could have been enough to end Mike. You don't know. You don't mm. know. Probably not, but you, you yeah. don't know. Um, so a lot of it is guesswork. And you know what? We're humans. We, we make mistakes. You know, yeah. we, we will make some errors and things like that. And, you know, we just, we wanted to be fair and equitable. And to me, it was more about showing everyone how to train this stuff and what it should look like and people kind of miss the point you know they're like oh you know they're being real pedantic about the rules and being real literal mm. it, it, like like the shank tank where people are complaining about every little thing oh why don't you do this why don't you do that the point that you're missing is knife defense is so difficult that's what we're trying to illustrate yeah you know um look at the bigger picture not just be pedantic about the rules look for the lessons that are there to be learned that's what i'm sort of doing this for i'm the the competition is secondary to the learning that we're trying to get across for me but yeah but that was my still thing. yeah I, I i came from that same spot but just to assure everyone we will be more meticulous and even more strict about scoring for season two so plus jeff yeah. chan has the belt that he needs to protect so yeah, <laughs> so yeah. We'll, we'll do our best uh, speaking of Mike, who's right now on camera, so a lot of people, I was personally actually, I was very pleasantly surprised that people were considerate, like the comment section, and a lot of people weren't like, oh, Mike did bad. He actually did good altogether. But, you know, a lot of people said, well, Mike did great for his size. Like a lot of people recognize that size does matter. And uh, also, too, by the way, I a lot of respect for you for noticing Mike's sneaky, dirty moves and making sure that that gets registered. I think you did great with that. But yeah, yeah just speaking about Mike being smaller, uh, I'm happy that a lot of people realized that that's a huge difference. If everyone was his size, it probably looked, everything would have looked very different. Uh, yeah. So what are your thoughts about the size difference and Mike being here? Um. I'll give Mike credit because he was up against it and he showed a lot of heart and determination and put it through. And like even this here, he was struggling, but you know what? He got up and fought on. Mm -hmm. you know, he got up and did some other things. He made some highlight reels like this. Oh, yeah. This is going to be um, one of the highlight moments. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> like he did a lot of good things, you know. He just – and to his credit, he knew like he was up against it. They were a lot bigger. And no complaints, just fought on and that's – you know, that's what you'd ask for. Yeah, I actually really appreciate that as well about Mike, that he did not complain about... Like, there was one moment, you know, in, uh, after his day two ended and before the zombie event, I spoke about that in the kind of wrap-up episode of the Ultimate Cell Defense Championship where I'm sharing the behind-the-scenes stories. Uh, Seth and Mike were freaking out at that moment. They're like, they're, it was too much for them, but they calmed down. But they still weren't really complaining. They were just freaking out about what's about to come next. But yeah. aside from that... Mike was super cool. Like he could have complained about some things for sure. Like we all could complain about things. Like you can always find things to that could bug you. But but Mike never did that. He was like he he had a lot of challenges, especially with the size difference. But he never had a problem with it. He was just like going through it, and a lot of respect for him. And and all in all, I think he's a lot of people consider him the champ, the champ of the people yeah, after the people. people's champ. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that it turned out that way because he deserves it. So yeah, it's really cool. and all the all that those little conversations but was awesome like he him and seth 
up with eight or one episodes, I think. So, um, yeah, it's it's a shame that they won't be here for season two, but hopefully they come back in the future. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Or and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah. I, I have to admit as well, Seth and Mike they did a really good job of being on the camera. Their interactions, like a lot of the fun moments in between, were coming from them. Everyone yeah. shipped in and gave gave great moments. But I, when I was editing, I realized. Oh, Mike and Seth pop out quite a bit because they just have so many fun moments. I'm yeah. sure we have a lot of fun moments for season two, but but yeah, part of me was sad when Mike and Seth decided not to be part of season two. But at the same time, you know, I was initially stressed about it because uh, I was thinking, well, uh, you know, they would make such a good team again. But then they made space for the new ones, and yeah. they're gonna have new dynamics and new conversations. And I think that's in the end, that's probably for the best. Yeah, and there could be someone else that steps up to the plate and he's equally as entertaining and and things like that. But yeah, like always welcome back. They were awesome. Like I, I, yeah, they were, they were great. They were great. I just, yeah, a lot of time for that. Those two. Yeah. So uh, be before we continue to the next episode, a quick moment for questions and answers. Uh, but before we get questions, because there's a bit of a delay between what we see and what's happening, I'll just pop up a random comment <laughs> uh, and see what uh, they're saying. Hey, man, I would really love to see some more team fights, maybe even free versus free or like gang fight type scenarios. Do you guys plan on doing that or focusing more independent fights? So first I want to say we're not going to reveal exactly what we're going to do uh, no. by any chance. But uh, what are your thoughts about the scenario in general? Uh, yeah, a lot of people really enjoyed like the zombie when they were in teams of three and the, yeah. the hide and go stab. So definitely something to look at. Um, some more sort of team challenges for those guys. Like, yeah, for sure. I just think um, it added that other element, just like their interactions and working together and things like that. So I think we can. I think there's a few few areas where we can do that. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think it'll be fun. It could be fun to have more team dynamics. So, so yeah, that should yeah. be exciting. I've got some good ideas. Like I've got, I haven't yeah. run them yet, which I'll do, but um, I've just been taking notes in a little notepad and I've got some ideas. Some are very outlandish. Some are going into territories that I kind of try wanted to avoid, but I just think that perhaps they'd be so good viewing that let's just do them anyway. And yeah, we'll talk about that. In due for time. sure, for sure. Just a very quick note for everyone. Uh, I actually think I skipped that part from my wrap up video, and I didn't put it on record. But the way I see season two is there's Terminator one and there's Terminator two. There's Alien and there's Aliens. And the first movies they're great. But the second movie takes the same concept and just makes it better. So that's our uh, that's the plan for season two. So so expect cool things. Like uh, some people are concerned, like, oh, will you come up with new challenges? But I want to put on record that Jeff Phillips is a brilliant mind. He you, you have an endless resource of challenges, so we're not in problem in any. Yeah, like with that. I, I'm pretty shit in other areas of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is one area where. I'm very organized and my whole job um, for the last, geez, 30 years apart from doing this is I was a physical education teacher. I sort of still am. Um, and the thing I prided myself on was particularly with, um, how do I say this and be politically correct, all the fat kids in the class who hated sport, hated activity. I used to pride myself on being able to get them up and moving by disguising I guess, um, exercise in games and things like that. And I guess it's all sort of generated from there, like years and years of doing that. And when I started teaching and looking and seeing the deficiencies in some of the training routines and things that people do, and I started to put my own thought into it, like it's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not very talented in many areas. Um, you know, my lawn's very long. My wife's got a list of um, chores that she wants me to try and fix, but I'm terrible at it. Uh, but this is one area I've got got some ability so plenty of ideas and plenty of things that we can do nice uh another question uh did you all know what the latter score was been between each event and actually i, I can put it on record and let, let everyone know that we did not know all the scores especially for the bus bash uh like the way i edited this the the episodes it's mostly what happened but sometimes just for the sake of storytelling and to make sure everyone knows what's happening uh, there were some differences, uh, minor differences between what happened and how it was presented. And one of them was we did not know the score for the buzz bash because we needed uh, or the judges needed time to sit down and to properly look at it. Uh, I think that was the only one which uh, yeah. 
needed to be reviewed at the end. So we we were a little bit uncertain before we knew the the complete winner. We weren't like, oh, now we know the winner. Winner. Period. We all were like, we think we know the winner. So that's yeah. a true story, right? Yeah, because I was the only one on the bus out of the scores or the yeah. judges. Uh, the rest were all part of the gang that ran on the bus. So they had to look at it later. And also just from the angles and things like that, you couldn't see everything on the bus. It was really tough. And, um, yeah, I guess next season two we'll position cameras in certain areas to get different views. And, and yeah, we've got a few ideas like that. And same with, you know, going back to the how season two will be better. Like if this crowdfunding gets above and beyond what mm. it is, like all of this was done with things generally that I had laying around the gym, you know, mm. for the uh, we didn't buy a whole lot to add to that. Mm. Uh, so if we have that additional funding to go and buy stuff, like, man, the zombie can, can be on another level. And yeah. I've got a few other ideas too that we can spend the money to production and things like that. So, yeah, there's there's no limit to where it can go. Nice. A uh, quick last question before we jump on to episode three, and I think it's a fun question. Not one I thought about much before, but what are some fighters that are long shots to get but you would love to see on uh, Jocko, Rogan, et cetera? Um, for me, like the first one that comes to mind, I don't, I don't even think I actually really want that, but obviously Conor McGregor, I guess he's all over the <laughs> place again because, you know, he's doing the serious. Uh, at the same time, I would be concerned having him, uh, <laughs> that he would go over yeah. the board, do the bus, things which, yeah, oh, yeah, he's like, he's, you know? he has a reputation yeah. with buses. Uh, yeah. So I don't know, do you have an answer yourself, Jeff, about this? Uh, funny, some people in the comments are writing a list of people that we should invite. And someone was like Tyson Fury, and I'm like, he has paid what forty million dollars a fight. Yeah, like that's not going to happen yet. Like this is a fake tuxedo. Like it, it's not. You know, we don't have the funds to be able to get those people. Sure. But you know, there's but people like that. Yeah, like I, I would, I would. You know, if if the budget was unlimited, there's people like that that I would like. You know, Fedor's like one of my favorite fighters of all time, and. There's a whole bunch of people that, you know, Roy Jones Jr. that I would be awesome, <laughs> but you know what? They're out of our price range. So, so yeah. far, right, right now. <laughs> That's my, yeah. Who knows? And yeah. last one, uh, there's no comment here, but somebody contributed. Uh, is that Australian dollar? Does that, is that what the A stands for? I guess so. I so, so yeah. uh, Gaz Fromos one. Thank you very much. That's a contribution. I imagine that's for season two. So, thank you very, thank very you. much, man. Cool. Okay, so let's jump to episode three. And actually, as I'm doing that, I I guess as I said, like all episodes are awesome. I love all episodes, but at the same time, episode three definitely makes my top list. Like just the the it, it was a struggle to tell the story of episode three. I don't know if that's surprising for people or not, but uh, the cameras were all over the place, and not every not, like the the contenders they were hiding, so we couldn't have camera people following them and filming them because that would give out where they're hiding. So they had these GoPros, but the GoPros didn't function so well in the dark and the, the cameramen were running around. They didn't get everything. So when I when I sat down and there were like, I don't know, like 10 cameras all together. And when I was looking at the footage before editing, I thought this is gonna suck. I thought this episode was gonna be terrible because of how difficult it is to put together. But by the end of it, I was like, damn, so many great stories came out of that. And uh, a lot of people, mentioned as well like there's so much uh, tension there which i really try to portray because there was a lot of tension like this was probably the most stressed i was during the challenges because i just didn't know what to do in the warehouse and i knew the guys are coming there's a very great level of intensity and stress in that challenge and uh, and i was doing my best to portray that through the editing through the storytelling and i think uh, it, it happened so so yeah, yeah. you were about to say something jeff yeah it looks really good it's like you said, it's really tough to film. Like I was one of the cameramen, I was following one of the attackers around, and I just had my phone. And I remember walking around with him for about seven or eight minutes and nothing happened. So I was like, delete, delete. And then I kind of alerted him to where Jeff was accidentally, like going on and it didn't work for some reason, didn't turn out. But as I walked past, like, I think I jumped, like I got, I saw Jeff all of a sudden and I kind of was startled and that, that triggered it perhaps, but um, it was really tough to film, like it's, because it's such a big place, like people don't understand that's like a four-story 
building. And, uh, you know, we only sort of went on the first floor, I guess. I don't think any... Oh, yeah, actually, Matt climbed up pretty high. In yeah, one area. it didn't but turn out to his favor, but yeah. No, but aside from that, like, there's so many places we could have gone. So to try and film was yeah. tough. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, quick note, somebody uh, also donated directly money through this chat uh, saying season one was amazing. Really excited for season two. Thank you very much, uh, man. We really appreciate every every support and it means a lot to us. So uh, looking back at the episode itself, so this is the my team. It was crazy because uh, I was like, I was telling Seth like, hey, Seth, let's team up, let's team up. Because I was so scared essentially and so stressed that I wanted to be with someone else. And I was all about sticking together. And as we're yeah. going there, Mike is like, yeah, no, whenever you plan something, everything goes to shit in those situations. So so let's let's just split together from the get-go. And I was like, okay, let's split. And it turns out they stayed together and they made a brilliant <laughs> plan. I was like, mother. <laughs> but yeah. uh, later, Mike apologized for that. So so we're fine. Yeah. We're fine. But uh, yeah, I'm here the first. And I was... I was running around. I actually accidentally left the building <laughs> through a door which is supposed to be locked. I came back. I was more stressed. It was it was crazy. And yeah. I decided to go for all or nothing, hiding in this room. And essentially, I t told the story the way it, it is here. Yeah. Oh, we have Jeff Chan. Jeff Chan is joining us. Sorry, guys. I was just finishing breakfast. <laughs> you can hey, eat Jeff. as you watch this. We love you whether you eat or not. <laughs> hey, Jeff. <laughs> Great to have you. Welcome to the live stream. I think everyone's going to be excited. How was your day? How are you doing? Uh, it just started. It just started. Uh, oh, great. It's only 8 in the morning here. Okay, nice. Well, I'll introduce you to what's happening. We're looking at episode 3. I'm about to get killed. Well, first time I they didn't notice, Alex didn't notice me. I was just sitting there and I was like, yes, I won. And then the light switch <laughs> moment is going to happen, so that's terrible. Uh, Jeff, while we have you, let's use this moment. What was your experience of the uh, hide and go stab? Uh, I thought it was really hard. It was probably like the most hardest one. And even if I could redo it, I, I'm not sure how I would do better. <laughs> yeah, I'm still surprised at how um, at how icy Mike, since he Seth, and just the other, or actually, yeah, you got caught early but i'm surprised how any anybody escaped the warehouse in general like i don't know how you guys hid for 15 minutes because i got caught early on yeah yeah well yeah ramsey was the master at hiding but other than that matt got caught i got caught and you got found but then you had a really epic escape so so kudos to you you still like that's one of the big takeaways from the whole series what i took away from from you jeff where you said this quote in uh See in episode six, the shark tank, but also I think you mentioned that in episode three. It's like, if I'm gonna go down, like, I'm gonna go down with like something epic, and I was like, I love that, right? Yeah. Like, I think, um, I mean, if there's a next time of a hide and go stab, yeah, I think, uh, instead of like 15 minutes, maybe a little shorter period, so then you know, it made you imagine I was able to leave the warehouse and. I would have to try to uh, escape out of, I don't know how many people were chasing me, but that would have been epic if I was able to escape the place. But I knew while I was running, I was running into a dead end because I knew I couldn't leave the place. So, uh, Yeah. Jeff Phillips, any comments about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was five minutes, so you had to be in there for five. Um, how I'm going to change it next season is I'm going to buy some sort of foam props, like foam furniture, phone briefcases and other implements and just leave them lying around so you can pick them up and use them. So you can perhaps pick up a soft chair and hit an attacker with a chair or use it as a barrier. Fire extinguisher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. that you can actually Sounds use fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some good spoiler for pre preparing to defend your belt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. I'm, 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 I'm aboard. I want Jeff to get. I want Jeff to defend his belt. I love him too much. <laughs> so, 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 what other um, uh, things can you spoil? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So that, <laughs> that was the one giveaway. That was the one giveaway. Uh, yeah, I was thinking if, yeah. if like I think Smy, I come to the party again. Like that's not finalized, but we're in discussions, and. Even if it's not furniture, like some of their kick shields. So I might get anything that's labeled Smite 
our sports master or whatever and leave it around the building. So if you find anything with uh, SMAI written on it, you can pick it up and use it however you see. Yeah. I think so. Um, and also I'll try and encourage people to, to move higher up in the building. So not like Matt did, but there's stairs and things that can take you into other rooms and offices like, like the zombie. So unless it's probably better to do after the zombie. So now that you know the layout of the building a little bit more, perhaps, uh-huh. um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, again, brainstorming here. Some suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely come up with some brilliant things. That's an option. Maybe a much yeah. better choice. But that is uh, also, zone. Jeff Chan. I need to refer by surname yeah, yeah. because you guys are both Jeffs. Uh, I was saying before this started how scary the, the warehouse was. For me, like, it was the scariest one the most intense one, like the most stressful one, because I just didn't know what to do. And I came in there barely knowing the environment. Jeff Chan, you mentioned as well, like it was scary, right? Yeah, it was, it was very scary. Like obviously not scared for my life kind of thing, but like right. as a game, you know, you can get scared when you're playing a game too. Yeah. Uh, I just, as soon as the guy started walking and I'm hiding, like my heart was beating so fast. And especially when they walked past me and then, yeah. then um, yeah, no, it's just a scary situation, whereas there's a lot more time to wait and be scared, whereas the other scenarios, they happen so quick that you don't really have time to be scared. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, for me as well, I was running, searching for a place to hide, and I mentioned uh, just before that what did not make the final cut, I actually accidentally left through a door, which is supposed to be locked, and I think I just broke through it or whatever, and I had to run around the whole building, run in back again, and I know I only have a minute to hide, so I'm just like, I'm out of breath. Also, the helmet doesn't help. It's foggy. And my plan is to sit there and hide and not move. And and I just like, <laughs> my heart is beating so fast. My breathing is going so fast. And I had to try to calm that down because they're going to find me. So it was super stressful. And, and yeah, Jeff, you wanted to ask I was going to say, so how did I see my escape again? Because I'm just watching the, the screen right now. How, where did they hide? Because five minutes was, felt like a very long time. So, so Mike and Seth, they made a brilliant plan. So, uh, so under the bleachers, there was some sort of a thing. Uh, Jeff Phillips, yeah, you should, you should know. And then I think he hid on top of it using a chair, and then Seth moved the chair, and then huh. Mike threw a bottle to get the attention of the attacker, and that's when Seth ran away. But then the attacker, he realized that Mike is here too. But what Mike did then, brilliant Mike, he oh, he opened uh, one door just to pretend. So the attacker ran away through that door, and then he ran away through the other door. I'm like, how do you come up with that stuff? My 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 plan was sit and hide. <laughs> that was like, pretty smart. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, what? So we're about to go to the uh, sumo uh, beach event. That was on the first day before everything started. Uh, Jeff. You were still jet lagged, <laughs> probably. How I was jet lagged, but uh, I don't think being jet lagged had to do with anything. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. mean, it's such a short, short scenario, and yeah. Um, yeah. Even if I had energy, yeah. since they said and Rams, you were too big to try to push out of the circle. Yeah. What was your game plan? I think that didn't make the final cut uh, for the sumo. Um, I didn't have game plan. My game plan was to try to one-on-one someone but as soon as i waited for the opportunity i got pushed off to the side either by you or or i I can't remember what happened did you because there's that epic moment it's one of my favorite moments where you do the matrix neo kind of that's when i that's when i when i engaged with someone someone pushed me from the side and i kind of stayed bounced and then uh uh the second the second time when i finally did Dropped to the floor was because I tried to engage with Ramsey, and I think it was since he said he pushed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth was too good for this. He was like the overpowered boss. <laughs> we didn't have much chance. Yeah. yeah, there's. Okay, well, I got these two guys out. That was that was wasn't too bad. I was very stressed. I was like, uh, I again, I didn't have. It was the first challenge. I was still kind of not in the game. My head was not in the game, so I just wanted to get at least someone out. And once I did, I tried to survive a little bit longer, but I was like, okay, okay, that's that's a good start. That's, that's good enough. I tried to get you out by using <laughs> Seth's energy, but then you did the Matrix thing. I think that's that's about to come out. Yes, yes, maybe that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, so so now Seth is pushing me, and I, I intentionally go towards you. I thought, okay, Seth is going to get you out for me, 
but I didn't expect you to do this this crazy move. Do you remember doing it, or it just happened spontaneously? Um, I mean, it just happened instinctually. I actually do recall that exact moment because I hurt my ankle. Oh yeah, when that happened. How did that play? It wasn't a serious injury, but yeah, I did hurt my ankle at that at that point. Because you did not mention that whatsoever. Maybe once, but you you never like said, "Oh, I have this injury that's bugging me." So was it disturbing your further performance, or how was it? Um, I, not really. It just hurt. It just hurt, and it's mm. nothing I couldn't tough out. It's just like if you have a bruise, it hurts when you're not doing anything. But once you're actually fighting or sparring or whatever it is, you kind of just kind of ignore that pain. True. Yeah, it was crazy for me as well. I busted up my thumb uh, during the bus bash. Uh, I think in our fight with you, I, I, I hit my thumb to, to the helmet. Mm -hmm. And it was like swollen bad. I could barely move it. And it's still healing. Like I still, still right now. in it. Yeah. And it's like, wow. and so I could train now, but for like two months, I, it was like I couldn't use it. So it was like a pretty bad injury, turns out. But every time I would go into a challenge, I would just kind of exclude it. I would not think about it. And I was just like, it didn't really bug me. Maybe I couldn't, you know, use my thumb so much. Mm -hmm. But during the challenge, it wasn't there. I guess the mind is brilliant how it can exclude what you don't need during a fight. Absolutely. Especially the adrenaline is what helps. Right. Yeah. So this is actually what we're looking at right now. That's a funny moment where you guys came in. Apparently, you made a superb plan. What we happened? That, what, what happened? What, what happened? <laughs> We had a plan to stick together, but as soon as we got into like the theater, um, the, wherever the bleachers were, I looked to my right and Matt was already gone. And I was with Ramsey, so me and Ramsey kind of okay. went to hide in the bleachers. And then uh, Ramsey went in to hide underneath the bleachers, and I was actually going to hide with him. Okay. But then it was really dark, and I thought I would trip over myself getting in there. So I decided to stick with something safer in case someone came out. I would be able to sprint out. But I should have followed Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ramsey yeah. was the, the, the ninja. I believe if, um, if I stayed with Ramsey, I would have made it out. Yeah. I, can, I, I, can mean, run. I think I can run. I think that the... I would love... I, I actually would have loved to see you sprint because, like, only a few of us got to show our sprinting skills, you know, Seth and Mike. Uh, the others, we just got caught. I mean, you ran through the corridor and did this beautiful flying knee here which is a uh, one of the highlight moments so i'm happy you did it <laughs> but but yeah i mean i think one of the best ways to win we did not know that adrian the rugby player is hiding at the exit right but, i forgot about that right but then the best way to win against him would have been to run out for two people at the same time i mean mm -hmm. he couldn't catch two people so one would probably sacrifice themselves you know there would be a moment like push the other guy towards adrian <laughs> if you're evil but <laughs> But yeah, I mean, when this would be the winning strategy to just stick together, actually. And none of us did. I mean, Seth and Mike, kind of, but yeah, it's too bad. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, the whole premise of that and, and the tree, because I know in the comments there were people going, well, why would you run to a tree? So the theory was how it originally was supposed to start was I was going to drop you guys off in the van. You ran in and then I drive back and pick you up at a specific time. You know, like in the war movies when... A helicopter yeah. lands at a particular point. You have to be there to get on there. If you're right. not, you lose. Kind of thing, you die. It was kind of based on that. Like, because if mm. I'm driving a getaway bus to pick you up and the guy sees me, they're going to come after me, so I'm going to drive away. So you had to be at that particular checkpoint at that time. And I just figured the tree was easier, like in terms of, not in terms of getting to, but more in terms of safety. Because to run up to the van, you'd have to cross concrete and things like that. And I didn't want anyone to get... To get injured or hurt so i but, like the concept though i think we may still use it for season two if we decide to do the, the challenge yeah and the thing and about two is going to be interesting <laughs> it definitely will be um, yeah <laughs> yes yeah. so so here's my here's my like perspective of things yeah. uh, season one was already really hard um because of the size difference in in the competitors but i, I mean i'd say luck and skill let me win um but then the next season not only is everyone bigger but also more skilled oh yeah <laughs> ufc fighter eight 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 and one um who, who else we got uh then the jordan 
Jordan, yes, and I've already been beaten up by him. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about your, your thoughts on Jordan? So you sparred, but it was more grappling sparring? Or... No, but we did we did MMA sparring and yeah. then just grappling sparring. In just the pure grappling, obviously, he dummied me. In the MMA sparring, um, he's also dummied me. I mean, I would say it's slightly skewed with, with, with the res results because... Um, it was was very controlled striking, and as soon as he uh, got a grab, as soon as he grabbed me, or as soon as we grappled, he would just outpower me and outskill me. Like he choked me out with boxing gloves on, sixteen ounce boxing gloves on. <laughs> wow, um, yeah, that's a skill. So I guess it really depends, right? It depends on how the judges who scored. I think not to give out my strategy in season two, sure. but I think if I were to win in any scenario against jordan it would i'd have to strike mm -hmm. but then it, we're also wearing the big helmets so it depends on how we have the judging it that's actually one of the things uh, jeff phillips and i we haven't spoke about yet but it's something i will want to discuss when we're going to start having the kind of strategy meetings for season two but uh and i don't know jeff phillips your opinion about it but i think one of my ideas was maybe to incorporate scoring for knockout shots. You sometimes addressed it like, oh, Mike got a knockout shot. But like there's even like a moment in Shank Tank where Matt gets like a shot, which kind of is close to a knockout shot or Jeff kicks in the guy's head. Like, I don't know how to score that, but I almost seem like, yeah, I guess it would be cool to incorporate a scoring, which would give because right now it's more favoring grappling. Grap yeah. Right. So I guess it would be it would be interesting to look for ways to f equal out and also respect the striking. I don't know what do you think, uh, Jeff Phillips, about it. Yeah, just it'd be something similar, like wearing an elbow break stops being able to armbar you. It's kind of similar to that. So it does favor favor the grappler. Um, but having said that, like there's a video of us, my guys, doing the shank shank tank. And one of the guys gets dropped um, doing it. And you can see where the shots are landed and they back off. Like, what I'm going to encourage you guys to do this time that I didn't last time is throw your shots hard. Like, throw heavy shots, you know, uh, particularly against my guys. Like, hit them. And if you hit them hard enough, they'll back off. Like, when when you were, um, went at Aaron, when he had the knife and you guys kicked him and things, you saw him <laughs> back off because it hurt him. And so mm. if you throw hard shots like that, it will have an effect. Like it doesn't stop everything, but it stops a lot, no doubt. But yeah, we, we sort of take that into account. It's difficult to knock someone out in it, but I have seen it done. So Yeah, that's um that's why I relied so much on grappling for the first season for multiple reasons. It's just I felt like I could I should control the guy. And I knew that if I did land something, I would at least in my mind, I wasn't sure if they would continue uh, attacking or not. So that's why I relied yeah. on grappling to kind of uh, stop the, the scenario and kind of have the judges be like, oh, Jeff, control the scenario. That's what happened. But say I landed a kick, you know, they would keep running. In fact, what happens a lot in even sparring is that I'll land a high kick, but because it was a controlled high kick, you know, yeah. people will catch it and then sweep you. And then yeah, you yeah. be in a worse situation. Uh, but yeah, season two looks like uh, I'm going to have to focus Wrong. on Striking. So, yeah. Not, not even because of the judges, but because there are two, from what I know right now, two really strong grapplers, stronger, heavier. True. Yeah. All the Western combatives guys are listening to this right now and holding their heads, thinking, like, shit, what did I get myself into? But I think, yeah, but I think it's, you know, for a lot of, I think the way I see it as well, we came into season one and we discussed this with Jeff Phillips before you jumped in, uh, Jeff Chan. But uh, we came in with this, first of all, for the experience. Like, you know, well, the scoring is a little bit secondary because, first of all, it's about showing what works, what doesn't work, going through these challenges, revealing so, aspects about self-defense and just bonding. But people take this very seriously. For some people, for the viewers, it's like, this is very important. Like, who wins? Who gets the score? And we, we realized, okay, I guess we have to respect that. Uh, we respected it for sure in season one, but we have to respect it even more for season two and uh, so i guess yeah if we come in i don't want to make it uh, what however that sounds like i don't want to make it too serious where where the guys are becoming like enemies because it's like point every point matters it's like no it's we're still there for the experience mm -hmm. but just to respect the points and that you could you could you know you could really you wouldn't have to hold back too much 
just because you know to be nice but but when you're going into the challenges that you're really going to the challenges to represent yourself and do your best so yeah, yeah that, that, that was also another thing that me and I see Mike were kind of talking about in season one was that I came into season one uh not that I don't like anyone in season two but in season one I, I knew them a little bit better and I was uh, yeah. a little more well acquainted I, I really liked them so in my mind I didn't really want to go crazy or like this is my first time meeting them and I, I, Jeff is that guy who like goes hard <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> so, my first yeah. match was with with Icy Mike my, like the first 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 scenario was the bus and it was with Icy Mike and um one of Icy Mike's first things that he said to me was like are you are you that guy that spars too hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well yeah it's crazy that but i guess you know i think this is a bit off topic for for the usdc but in, in regards to your videos i guess some of those videos where you spar hard they just become more popular because people like mm -hmm. to see hard sparring and then whoever sees only that video because not nobody watches all videos they mm -hmm. get the impression oh he's the guy who spars hard but that's not the case you know you're so controlled and you were so yeah, so Good. so because we had that kind of like topic floating around our minds, when I met Icy Mike, like I didn't want to be that guy to like overpower him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I guess, I, I, yeah, great, uh, Jeff. There was a lot, a lot of respect and a lot of friendship. And it, yeah, yeah. Hard, like people that you really like, it, it is hard to hit, to hit them hard and try and hurt them. And mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I noticed. There was a lot of, how do I say this? There was a lot of love between everyone, you know? There was a lot yeah, of... Yeah, which is great. I loved it. And people wanted to see each other succeed, whereas I think this next season, it will be a little bit more cutthroat where people will be competing a little bit more, I dare say, uh, just because you don't have that existing relationship. So, yeah, yeah think, it'll be... Yeah, uh, maybe. I think partly that's true, but at the same time, uh, not to make the situation stressful before it even starts uh, i think um the thing is we we are actually also very conscious of getting good guys on the yeah. team like as participants we we're not getting anyone who's like an asshole we don't want the drama that's not our goal and so nathan levy the ufc fighter super nice like such a nice guy we we had multiple conversations he's like super mellow super chill i'm sure you know he can turn on and, and you know, kick ass fair. Yeah, he looks. Yeah, he looks. You know, like, but that that used to be my impression when I just when I started going from traditional martial arts to MMA, and I would go to the gym. Everyone was so freaking scary. Like, I was just like intimidated by every single guy, and then I would get to know them, and they're all so nice. Like, not a hundred percent all of them, but so many people are so nice. And Natan is super nice, super nice. Uh, Jordan, really mellow, very nice. Kevin, the basketball player, he's like makes funny TikToks. Seems like a very nice guy too. I don't know him yet, but Jeff Phillips knows him. He's a nice guy, right? Cool oh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like uh, Ranton has a crazy sense of humor, uh, but uh, whenever he's he's he goes into more serious mode, very nice guy. It's like I think like we we're gonna have a lot of bonding as well, and that's what people loved about season one. Everybody enjoyed that we had the camaraderie, that we we supported each other. I think that's you know, especially in reality TV, you don't get that. You usually like they force you to. They bring in an asshole just for the, the the you know the entertainment value, but I think that's not what we're what we're looking for. I still want I want the competition, but I also want everyone to love each other and respect. And I think we're gonna have that as well. So, but you can hit them hard still, Jeff. <laughs> so. My alone in thinking that people want to see that side of it, like the story, the relationships, the conversations. Like I I think initially um, you came out of the gate and made it all action packed to, to draw people in. Yeah. But now I think some of the things I'm starting to read is like some people would like to have a roundtable discussion where yeah. we, you guys are discussing various things and, and yeah. showing your forming and that kind of thing. So a little bit more reality TV like as well as yeah. keeping it. Definitely. Yeah, I think it'd be good. Um, so Jeff Chan, I know your day is busy and you still have a whole day ahead. Do you still have some more time to watch episode three or four or? I have a few things? minutes left before I got ahead to the gym, but I, I think we can watch a bit of it. Okay. Because so I'm going to just start episode four, which is the zombie event and uh, the the fun one. I'll just oh adjust the sound. And if, just to make sure you don't leave us before we reveal the, 
the secret of the universe that everybody's interested in. Can you talk? Can you walk us through about your infamous sprawl against zombies? <laughs> I just reacted. I don't know what happened. I don't know why I sprawled. Um, no, actually, so what happened was we opened the door. Yeah, we opened the door. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just thought something was going to pop out. And I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I just shot my head back. <laughs> It's so fascinating. I love that moment. It's just like, and it's crazy because I actually didn't even clearly put it in the f initial edit, and then I showed mm -hmm. it to all of you guys, and you were like, you were like, why are you not putting this in? This is this is crazy. We we everybody has to see that that this this is so interesting, and I'm happy I did because so many comments were like, P people remember the sprawl against <laughs> zombies, which were not in the room. But but it was instinctual, right? It was just like your brain just did it, right? Yeah, and it just shows that um, being an MMA guy doesn't always mean you have the right reactions. <laughs> That's a very humble. But like imagine a guy. Imagine what came out of the door was someone with a knife, and I, I went to sprawl. <laughs> yeah, well, I love yeah. the fact that when the zombies came running out of the storeroom, you actually looked scared, like you were. And you were running? I love that. I just thought, wow, you're such a badass. Can... I was scared. I actually oh. treated I treated it like a real thing. Yeah, like I love that. I thought that was that was kind of cool that even someone such as yourself was startled by that. And I, I thought that was a cool moment as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I want to appreciate that as well. It's cool that uh, there wasn't any pretending like, oh, this is yeah. nothing, like, you know, but... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if I fight, no, run. <laughs> no, there were very cool moments. But yeah, it was scary. Like, like I think, Jeff Chan, you said that in one of our talks in between that it's the jump scare, which is the scary part. There's tension. And you're not, like, really afraid. But but then you, you know something is coming. It's going to come. And then the jump scare freaks you out. And then once the zombies come in, it's not as scary anymore. But the tension was always there. It's 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 really cool that we managed to have that atmosphere. So. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of like when you're watching a scary movie. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know that it can't be that scary, but you don't know. You're you're just anticipating the uh, the big loud noise. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jeff Chan. Uh, so was zombies one of the would you say one of your favorite experiences or just in general, which which was your ex favorite experience from all the Favorite challenges? experience would probably be the zombie one, the circle. Hmm. And what else did we do? Um, and the, the shark tank. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't say, like, I obviously didn't perform well, but it was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah which, you know, I, I love that part about you, by the way, and I try to express it through editing as well that especially in the circle drill it was very evident that everyone was like oh my god this is the hardest thing I've ever done this is so hard and you come in and you're like oh this was the most fun <laughs> and i'm like this dude yeah, it was you're living it. Yeah. but i love that you know because some people focus on oh my god this is so hard but you were focusing this is fun like that 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 fact that you enjoy the challenge and see that's a positive thing versus oh my god you know this is so stressful yeah, I mean, I, I definitely came into to this um, self-defense challenge not expecting to win or not expecting to be the best. Just I came in to have fun and experience it. And I'm going to be going into season two the same way, a little bit less less confident. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to experience things. I, I know in reality, like, just because you do MMA doesn't mean you're going to survive a self-defense attack, right? 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is actually a cool scene as well. It's your team, uh, Jeff, where <laughs> Seth is trying to be silent. What was your strategy? So, so much quicker than the other group. <laughs> but you know, I love this part that uh, I hate the part about us and I love the part about you. And some people <laughs> said that in the comments as well, that we were so methodical and so strategic and we died. And you guys were like, just like, bash, 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 go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's that part where Gabby says, oh, let's make a plan. And you're like, and you're Jeff like, no, let's just go and kill. <laughs> and and you it. nailed it. I was like, I wish we did that. <laughs> so, yeah, your strategy is better. How was this? Was this challenge scary going through the blind zombies? It was. It was. My heart was beating. 
So like I said, I treated the whole thing pretty seriously. And right. especially uh, at the beginning when you're grabbing the knife, I wasn't sure how fast the zombies were going to react. Right. Yeah, right. And uh, I actually... Dead zombies and then there's like... Uh, 28 zombies. days later, zombies are the fast yeah. ones. Uh, I actually wanted to, to appreciate that from you, Jeff Phillips, that at the end you gave free roaming and running skills to the zombies because i think that like some of the people i watched the episode with and i showed them uh, uh some of them and even in the comments as well and i i wanted myself to survive for as long as possible i wanted the contenders not to die but i think for season two possibly i think it would make sense to ramp up the difficulty level earlier yeah. so yeah. that it wouldn't be too easy because it was it was like the first couple were stressful for us but the viewers could see like the dying possibility was not as big. So, yeah, um, yeah. I've had some say um, we should have a berserker, which is um, some zombies that can run full speed. Yeah. And I watched uh, Zombie Land Two again the other day, and they had three types of zombies. So the first mm. one was the Homer, like the Homer Simpson, that was really dumb. The second one was the Hawking, like Stephen Hawking, which is really intelligent. And the last one was <laughs> the Ninja, which could hide and things like that. Oh, that's what killed me. Do something like that. Like we we have some different levels of zombies in different areas or something like that. They progressively get harder and harder. Or, and I'd like to do something outside with a massive horde of them. So Same maybe here, yeah. yeah. So maybe you start at the other building where the gym is and have to get to the other building. And there's like twenty of them outside. Like I think it, it, that would be cool. Like, That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's one of the priorities for me. Obviously, not the biggest priority, but it's on, on, on a high part, point for me to make an epic scale freaking zombie event so that the uh, this one was great. This was awesome, but to make it even like five times better. So it should be fun. Do we get points this time? Jeff Phillips? Or is it uh, just a freebie? We could because... I guess you could kind of string it and say that, that there are self-defense qualities or attributes being trained here. In a way. I guess I, maybe, let's see, maybe let's give a vote as well. I wonder what the viewers would say. I, I don't want to get them to get upset, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. What do you think, Jeff Chan? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I just uh, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. It's a, it's a decision we have to make. You guys were very good at uh, triple tapping as well. <laughs> uh, I, I, You know what? I enjoyed the teamwork aspect yeah. of it. And um, there is something that I'm hoping that you guys will do in season two, um, which is like a two versus two. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we were, before you jumped in, we were actually talking about that. Somebody was asking if there's going to be like more team events. And we thought that probably we will go for it because, yeah, it's it's a great experience. The strategic thinking, like even in cell defense, one of the best cell defense ways is to just be with a gang. Be with You're walking with a friend often, right? Off, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, so so we'll probably, without revealing too much, we'll probably do some more team stuff. That'd be cool. Yep. That'd be cool. Uh, oh, we missed your infamous uh, <laughs> or famous, <laughs> famous sprawl. But uh, also, <laughs> Jeff Chan, I'm, I'm curious to ask. Uh, so, uh, watching yourself, like especially like in the zombie episode, uh, like the whole scenario, how it looks like. How, how was the experience of watching yourself take part in the zombie event? Uh, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought... Uh, Did it, like, differ from your experience being in it? Uh, do you remember things differently or everything is more or less the same? I had no idea I sprawled. That's that's what I remember. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, everything else was pretty clear i mean it wasn't like my my play in the game wasn't too long i hid then i got found out and then i ran and then i got locked up in the door and, or in the room and that's that's pretty much all that happened yeah. what do you think helped you survive because you and seth spoiler alert whoever didn't see the episode you are the only two guys who survived mike was close but he, uh, sorry to say, but he deserved to die. He killed me. <laughs> but you guys survived. What do you think led to you surviving? Um, I don't even know how I see Mike died. I think, um, I think I was just, I guess maybe more alert. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that was the crazy part because again, you were like, but also like that teamwork, that dynamic teamwork worked out for you. Where you yeah, were, actually, uh, sorry, Sensei Seth yeah. was on my right or left, and we were kind of like back to back. 
I see yeah, Mike yeah. was in that back to back, but then I guess he kind of went off on his own at some point, and that's when he died. True, it's a good point. Yeah, but but yeah, I enjoy that you were uh, you were feeling each other and like you were communicating to some degree, but it wasn't like you weren't like strict about doing things, but you were still <laughs> together. You could feel the teamwork. You weren't everyone for themselves. That that was really cool. Yeah, like I really enjoyed teamwork stuff. Nice. Any plans for season two zombie apocalypse, Jeff Chan? Teamwork, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And I think I think um, obviously you, you guys are the the, the master planners, but like yeah. in the real scenarios, when if there are teamwork, um, it kind of balances things out. Like say one guy is six, really really big versus partner up with someone who's smaller and vice versa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we, we kind of winged the team, uh, the way we designed the teams. Like we were just like, okay, well, this guy with this guy. But I don't know, maybe for season two, we can be more coordinated in how we team people up. I don't know, Jeff Phillips, what do you think? Yeah, so maybe after a couple of events, whoever's in first place teams up with who's in place, two and five, three and four or something like that. Yeah. Also, too, actually, now that I think of it, there's also the differences in experience level, in size. That could also factor in. This is obviously not official yet, but like Ranton, he has very little combat experience. Kevin is training right now, but he's essentially not like a combat sports nah. guy. He's just big. So it would be, I guess, Jesse Ankamp is somewhere in the middle between the two. So I guess we could maybe look into teaming people up in an intelligent way. But who knows? Who knows? But yeah. and. Jeff Chan, I'm curious to ask you as well, what's your opinion of uh, participating in the same season, like season two, with the tall athletic guy, the basketball player? Any thoughts about that? Um, I guess it depends on the scenario. I mean, my, right now, my mind, in my mind, the, the most, the, the biggest threats are uh, UFC fighter and Jordan teaches jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, it was funny. Now I remember in sep episode seven, the final challenge, we had these two uh, big guys come in who were not in, there to fight, but we thought they are. And yeah, so Jeff, yeah, go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I really wanted to go against a tall guy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought about as well. It's crazy. Can you explain that? Uh, nothing. I just, I just because uh, you guys were telling us that he was a kickboxer, and because he was so tall and long, I just thought it would be really cool to try to take down a super tall guy who's a kickboxer. Um, and, and again, with season one, my mind was like grappling, my, my, my go-to was grappling. So I don't think I would have been able to take down the bigger guy, mm. uh, or, or cause he was a grappler, right? So no, yeah. I was hoping that the Offici tall Officially he was. Yeah, Basketball. officially he was, yeah. But officially he was like a wrestling champion or something. So, yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So in my head, I was like, okay, obviously not, I'm not going to grapple with him. So I'm hoping I'm going to get the tall skinny guy. Yeah, it was funny because you said you would, you actually were, cons you were, you would, you would have preferred the big guys versus Seth, right? Yeah, just because they don't know, because Sensei Seth already knows what I'm trying to do. Now. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seth so even it was told. Surprise. Yeah, Seth even told me like he was expecting you to sprawl, uh, to go for a takedown, and you, and I you did right away, and you did, and he sprawled right away. Yeah. So he read your mind. He was, I think he told me like Jeff is gonna Jeff is gonna go for a takedown and I and I that's that wasn't entirely the, the main reason why I stopped because we we ran into the middle of the bridge but then I, I looked at you I was like okay what is he gonna do what is he gonna do and then you faked a takedown and you didn't go for it but I didn't react because I was very cautious about what you're going to do so it kind of worked out to my favor but but yeah Seth read your mind Seth read your mind yes 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 I mean I think I was being a little too predictable throughout through, throughout the, the season but but you know that's also the brilliant thing because you still pulled it off like that's what the thing like khabib you know everybody knows exactly what he's going for well not exactly but more or less and he still does it to people and and nobody can do anything about it and and i think that's that's a great uh representation of skills when you can mm -hmm. do something that people are expecting from you but you still pull it off so that's true, true. pretty amazing yeah and particularly self-defense yeah. is not you don't go back to your corner and have a corner man and yourself figuring out how to beat that person. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are more successful, I guess, in self-defense are really good at one thing, generally. Mm -hmm. So they have really good, defined, moved, and counters off, counters off. 
And that's the hard bit about training it be, is because someone gets really good at a particular move, but if they spar the same person every week, they've got to keep changing up what they do. Otherwise, they become right. predictable. So mm. there's a bit of method behind what you did as well, a bit of, uh, you know, particularly as it was a self-defense challenge. So Yeah, yeah maybe I'm, I'm telling you guys that next season I'm going to strike more and then I'm going to end up doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good strategy. Just just tell everyone I'm just going to go for double X and then kick everyone's ass with <laughs> some kicks. And... It's like the rock, paper, scissors thing and you keep going rock, 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 rock. <laughs> Joy, yeah. rock. And then you do. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, this is a cool moment, the office area for zombies. I. I was that the scariest one for you, Jeff Chen? Um, it was. It was scary. Um, yeah, I would say this was the scariest. And then the 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 last round was most intense, maybe the most fun. I like the I like the open space. Right. You actually did a great job when I was editing and looking at what you did. You did a great job at keeping distance. Like some of the zombies were jumping on you. And you were jumping back at the same time and hitting them because some of them took like 10 strikes to take down because they wouldn't register the first strikes, I guess, which is fine. But then but then if you would stay on the spot and hit them like Abby did that, she was hitting the guy, the zombie and technically he died. But then he also he got her. But as, as you were always keeping distance, they couldn't get to you still. They would die earlier before that. So, yeah, it was good. Outside management. fighting, outside fighting. Yeah, yeah. So both I guess these sensei set are outside fighters. Maybe that's true. And true, that's a good point. And you both did that, and you both survived. But I think Mike was more like, let's kick ass, and he would He's jump like, into in the pocket, dirty. Right, pocket. exactly. Like, that's how he is in in, in like uh, martial arts as well. True, true. And that doesn't work with zombies. You can't infight zombies. They're yeah. gonna bite you. That's a good point. Take more damage for sure. Did you consider about uh, zombie? Like Seth was concerned that the girls at the end are zombies. Uh, Gabby was like definitely not zombies, and she kind of saved everyone that way. What were your thoughts? Were you concerned about? I girls? was oblivious to do that, <laughs> uh, but I just thought it was really funny that Icy might kill the kill the girl. It was crazy. So Jeff Phillips, that was your daughter, <laughs> Jazzy. Oh, what was? Yeah. She hates Icy oh, Mike. When she <laughs> watches that, she can't watch it. It's so angry. It's like... Oh no. I mean, it came from nowhere. She didn't see it coming. Nobody saw it coming. I actually, I called it. I actually called it. There's on record. I removed that part from the, because I, I was dead, but my microphone was still recording on a certain like line. And I can, I, I have footage of me saying, he's going to kill them. He's just going to kill them. And I was like, I was right. <laughs> but Jeff Phillips, were you horrified by Mike? No, because it was Raina's fault. The other little girl, she said that she was beaten. So... You know, Mike did what he had to do. Um, it would have been I, cool if they could have been zombies. Like, if those two little ones then just launched at someone and started biting their arm, I thought that'd be cool. But it gets a bit messy them. And, yeah, so we Ideas decided. for season two, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> no. it, becomes, it becomes tough. Like, for the little girls to be getting hit and be able to enact sure. that, I think it's cool. yeah. If we can get very small people. Um, we get a tiny older lady who pretends to be a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the dying part. Uh, Ramsey first, and then yeah. later me. Sad yeah. day. I was I was actually, honestly, I was very upset. <laughs> later, I went through it. I got through it, but I was like, fuck. I, did, I really wanted to make it through, at least to the final challenge. But, but at the same time, you know, it turned out to be good TV. It turned out like... It turned out to yeah. be like even like you no know, Mike killing the girl, us dying. As I was yeah. editing, I was appreciating. I thought this is so much better than if we would have all survived. And yeah, it's like it, it sucked to die, but I'm I'm glad for the end result that we died. So. <laughs> that was a funny part. How you edited it, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like that part too. It just came out spontaneously. Uh, Sensi Seth, that, yeah. welcome hey. to the party. What's up, guys? How are you? Hey, hey, wait, wait. So season one winner if Jeff didn't go. Yeah, Congratulations. That's, that's my official title. <laughs> winner almost. <laughs> almost. That's right. 
Uh, like, what's up? Also known as first loser. Oh, it's too bright. <laughs> oh, Sorry, yeah. guys. I'm going to be a little dark. Yeah, yeah, no, you're fine. Thank you for joining us. Glad yeah. to have you here. Jeff, are you still okay on time or do you need to yeah, run? Yeah, I'm, I'm still okay on time. Okay, cool. So, Seth, we're looking at the zombies right now. What what are your memories from the zombies? If this is not your go, you just survived, you didn't kill the girls. Uh, but how was your whole experience? Yeah, I remember thinking, wow, they are doing way too much. I remember, like, we went, and I feel like we flew through it, and then you guys are going, and I was like, all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean, right. like, our team? Yeah. You guys were checking, like, every corner, every, like, little piece of everything. I feel like and you guys we still were, like, died. turning over pieces of paper looking for <laughs> Every drool. Every, yeah, right. Yeah. I, I remember sitting there being like, all right. The let's... thing is... Like, it's a good point you're making because the editing, you know, there's a lot that did not make the final cut. And this was, like, a long segment. Like, I had to cut oh, out, like, yeah. especially our team. You guys were, like, it was more or less what happened. For us, yeah. like, 80% of what was happening was cut because, as you said, we were just, like, going everywhere. And we still missed a freaking ninja zombie. Well, you I know the rule, the rule of zombies is that if you move fast, you're more likely to be safe. You gotta, like, you gotta be willing to go, you know? Jeff Chan and I, we're flying around. That, that's what we were uh, talking about earlier. We're, we're, uh, we're outside fighters as martial artists. And, uh, <laughs> that's that's right. But then uh, Icy Mike is like dirty boxing in the pocket. Oh, and... yeah. You're in that bite territory. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think I think it's, it's, it's a funny thing to say, but I think it's true. Like, especially when the final challenge, well, final like corridor room will come up. Mm -hmm. You guys, like the, the zombies are running. And when you would hit them, they would die while kind of, you know, jumping forward. And that's how Gabby died. She was hitting, but she was standing. Mm -hmm. And the zombies still got to her while dying. You yeah. guys always kept distance. And, and as they were dying forward, you were jumping back. And I think, honestly, yeah, that's probably the reason you guys survived. Besides being smart and beautiful and... <laughs> beautiful part. I knew that I had way more to live for than to be just bit by some zombie, you know? Yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> and, and that's where the unfortunate thing happened with Ramsey. Like, I, I hope he's okay and I, yeah, uh, okay in his neck. Because um, Aaron was up there and he said that for Jeff and Seth's group uh, and Gabby, because they were so quick, um, he could stay up there the whole time. He actually, his arms gave way and that's why he fell on Ramsey because uh... you guys were so slow and he was holding his body weight up there for so long. Yeah. That they gave way, so... Well, he was at a different spot too. For us, yeah, he yeah. was um, he Far, was yeah. he was like like ways down the corridor. True, true, true. Um, true. and I remember when he popped down, I was like, Ugh. and I remember yeah. thinking, oh, thank goodness, it worked though, it worked. <laughs> uh, nice so, my what girl. did you what did you guys think uh, when Mike killed the girl? What was going I, through your mind? So I remember thinking, I remember now that my genius was or my my tactic was kind of genius to just see if they could make emotions because oh, if, yeah. they, if they can like they you know they've turned but also now that i think about it they could just like they could be bitten and are, they are could going turn later. to be zombies in like two minutes yeah exactly yeah. um yeah. but yeah no it makes total sense of like that that little girl yeah 100 percent. like there it makes absolute sense we we're all sitting so at the at the beginning of the hallway, you guys, it, we all were just sitting there. Everybody who had either gone or had died was just like laying there with the de with the corpse of the zombies yeah. that were scattered through the hallway. We were just like, I think I think it was you, Rokus, was like, I think Mike's gonna kill that little girl. I, I said that it's on record. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> he's gonna kill him. He's gonna kill him. He's gonna kill somebody. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. It, like you could just feel Mike like salivating the whole time. He was like he was really into it. Like like this part too. Like I I, I wanted to make clear that this was not scripted. There was no plan. <laughs> I love that you guys did it. But yeah. I think part of that was because Mike was just like really in it. Like he was yeah. in it. Yeah, Mike was so in it. Mike didn't say a word to us that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Jeff, and Gabby are just like playing pool noodle fencing. And Mike is just like Running around, putting stuff on his arm. He found tape somehow. Yeah. Very <laughs> yeah. That was a brilliant move, by the way. Putting a shield. I mean, it didn't save him. He'd still die. But, uh, I but yeah, don't, that was a good move. 
Oh, this is where you try to sneak attack me. I don't remember how long Mike All has right. the shield on. I guess he lost it eventually, right? Because you're right, he, it wasn't there anymore. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was even there for very long. Yeah. Here comes Rokas. Yeah, you, I actually, I think I didn't include, that was a funny joke. Uh, you're like, you killed me, and you were like, come on, dude, like, no first zombie kills anyone or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you should have waited. Yeah, I should have been like at the end, like when you all are safe and you think you won and then jump. Mm. Ah, I'm a bad zombie. I need to learn zombie moves. <laughs> yeah, you got to learn the zombie moves. Yeah. So I asked Jeff Chan already uh, about the scariness level. How how scary was that for you, Seth? Um, the second room was definitely the scarier one until I thought this dude fell out of the rafters. <laughs> right. You thought that's a real person, right? Yeah, Jeff, did did you think that at all? Were you like, oh, somebody just died? I was kind of oblivious to it. <laughs> okay, I definitely. But but I, but I do agree that the second the second scenario or the second round or whatever was was the scariest. Yeah. Third one was more fun. I liked the open space. <laughs> it was a little bit more um, exciting because we can kind of move a little bit more. Like I didn't. Know I if would agree. Come from the left or right. Yeah, I thought it was more exciting for sure. A little less scary though, but definitely more exciting. Like this final one, you mean, or? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I actually didn't did give it justice uh, on the video because I was focusing so much on you know the the whole action bit. Yeah. But but yeah, I want to put it on record that you were sincerely concerned, Seth. Oh yeah. <laughs> about there, there's a decent died. bit of time. Also, who threw it? How did they know it wasn't? I mean, like, I'm, obviously, I'm. They they knew it was clear. But well, look. funny that because. I sat in the in the amphitheater on one of the seats, and the guy up the top, I said, when I put my hands on my head, drop it. And I put my hands on my head, and one of my guys ran around the corner and quickly stopped just before it. Oh, so my gosh. Kept running. As soon as it did it, and it, it was slowly falling, uh, and then I just, time stopped for me. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to die here. It's going to mm -hmm. hit him, get hurt badly. And it yep. was just by luck that he stopped. So that was my... <laughs> Uh, there has to be some close calls everywhere. Like you cannot like I think the way USDC season one went through is like so fluid compared to how shitty things could have went. But mm -hmm. you have to have moments where somebody something is close to killing the whole thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that was an intense moment for you guys. Like and you, again, like look, you, distance, 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 distance. Yeah, the outside spiders. I got a little sketched out here because I, I had to run through to stay safe and then I ended up by myself. But oh, Mike still has the shield. But then they everybody came back together. I was very thankful for that. Yeah, let's see, he jumped Mike, on the zombie. Mike jumped the gun a little too much. Yeah. Yeah, he just went into the zombie and then he got his head, top of the head. Yeah. Bit. And now Mike, you can see Mike immediately looking to take somebody's mask or, or, yeah, right. or something. Yeah. It's, it's actually on record. This conversation i had it's you know uh microphone recording and he's like he comes to jeff phillips and he's like hey can, how do i turn this zombie i want to surprise them at the end i want to surprise them at the end he's like <laughs> really like going for it and i think he was a bit too late he got his moments he was too easy to kill but he was trying he was doing his best. yeah he he was right next to the exit yeah like here, right here. I, he's still putting on it. the mask that's it. yeah he was Is too alone darker yeah. than than what it showed like to me i just remember being so much darker than this yeah, I was surprised the cameras picked so much up. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Uh, that's one of the reasons, actually. The reason I put initially the uh, night vision mm -hmm. is because the camera was just so bright. It looked like it's daylight, essentially. So mm -hmm. I was like, one of the cameras, because it's designed to film well in dark spaces. So I was like, oh, I might as well just put a <laughs> night, night vision on. And it, it looks good, I think. Yeah, it looked uh, great. It looked really good. Um, uh, go ahead. Seth, you yeah, but uh, did you guys were you were you guys happy to survive? Pretty happy, yeah. but then disappointed that we didn't get points. That's exactly but what then, I was going to say. Really? <laughs> at the same time, I was like, it doesn't matter anyways because the, the person that uh, I'm tied with on points was Sensei Seth, and he one, <laughs> so it doesn't matter anyways. Oh, you know what? Do you remember how much you beat me by? Like one point or something. Oh, I should have stabbed yeah. you. I should have been right there and been like, oh, Yeah, you no. should have killed oh, like, <laughs> Yeah. No, at the end of it, I was like, yeah. Yeah, we survived. Uh, I didn't get any points. 
They didn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, guys, uh, I, Jeff Chan, I know you may be a bit uh, more tight on time, but do you still have some time to go for an, another episode? Or? I got about five minutes. I got to go in, in five minutes. So, so I guess, uh, Seth, you have I get about 15 ish. Okay. So maybe I'll just uh, drop episode five. Because Hi, so much fascinating stuff happened in it. So while you guys are still here, we can look into it. And then later, me and Jeff Phillips will answer some questions. Yeah, I'm, uh, I might come back in a little bit later, too. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. No problem. We'll we'll see, but I literally, I just woke up and was like, yeah. all right, let's do it. <laughs> nice. uh, so your thoughts about scenarios. How, how is the whole event for you? Um, the whole time I remember thinking, I'm going to do my best to not fight anyone because I'm so tired. I'm just going to like, I'm going to use my words so well. And then the first challenge, was it? No, it couldn't have been. Jeff, do you remember which challenge it was that you tricked me? Tricked you? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so Jeff Chan did a brilliant move, and unfortunately, I'm a so. Very oh, 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 I remember, I remember, I remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the poop one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poop no, one? no, no sex, I think it's sex no. worker. It was the MJ one. Oh, it was the last yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. So I actually I was so upset that I did not make the final cut because nobody picked it up. But no, Jeff no, no, Chan... it, was the, it was the poop one because I remember I had to go to the washroom to wash myself, and that's why. No, no, it was no. after the poop one. Then it was after the poop one. No, I, I thought it was after actually the sex work. I call it sex work. Okay, the office one. Yeah. Because because you came back and you were all wet and sweaty, and I was like, I was like, oh my god, challenge three is definitely going to be action, and I was so freaking out, and that's why I thought that MJ is the attacker because Jeff Chan came out sweaty. Okay, yeah, and, I remember, I remember, yeah. and then and then I asked, and then I realized what the scenario is. Then that, that's why I asked. I was like. Why did Jeff Chan came out some so sweaty after the seduction <laughs> scenario? <laughs> Jeff Phillips and I had like, there's like a, there's probably like four minutes of footage of me just immediately after that challenge being like, wait, so did that, why? <laughs> like just the whole time being like, why? there's only one explanation why, why Jeff Chan he... came out sweaty out of the yeah. office scenario. No, that, was a, that was a genius move. That was funny. But yeah, really no, the, whole, out. yeah. the whole time I was fully expecting to fight all of these guys. Um, so while while MJ was like fussing, I remember thinking, I remember looking at everybody else being like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to fight everybody here. Is that what Jeff Phillips was putting us up to? And then as it went, I was like, no, I'm going to fight this hard. I'm just going to be best friends with this guy sitting next to us, which is which is probably what I would do, is I would probably try my best to just really be and convince this guy who's the only person who I thought at the time was I was gonna have to worry be worried about fighting. I didn't realize I would have to fight MJ too. But yeah, no, I definitely remember feeling like, oh okay, I don't wanna fight. I don't wanna fight. I don't wanna fight. <laughs> <laughs> you did uh, exactly two times for real in the whole series. So you did it with Alex? So when you had a chat to him and said, are we okay? Like after he threw those big shots. Oh, yeah. And then you also did it to Hala, the, the big Islander guy that was there. Mm -hmm. mean fun. You went yep. straight up and yeah, it went to see if it was real. So yeah. it was a reaction from you. So it was cool. Yeah. We were in the bathroom. I don't think there was any cameras in the bathroom for the finale before you and I wrote this. Yeah. I was talking to Hala so much. We were, yeah. I was like, he was like, oh yeah, I played, uh, I think he, he played a little bit of football or maybe it was rugby. Anyway, yeah, we were chatting up a storm about that. Uh, Jeff Chan, I think you actually wanted to fight opposite from the, the other way around from Seth, right? Uh, yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> I, would, because... I would go close um, with the first scenario right here uh, with MJ and, and um, the guy in the bleachers. I was very close to kind of like doing a surprise attack, surprise head kick. Uh -huh. But I thought maybe I'll save my energy because I want to win. But I, Jeff Phillips, that would have been fine, right? If you would have started a fight in a way, right? Yeah, we're, we're hoping that you didn't. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. I was thinking more so if if I did throw that, maybe I would get arrested. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably that would be 
Right. Set the what, cats, I think, as well. Right. I don't know what head kick laws are like over there. <laughs> <laughs> Punching is one thing, but a head kick, that that's okay. <laughs> or just getting in a fight in general. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's something that, like, going to a different area where I have no idea what the laws are, I think from a self-defense aspect, that freaks me out. Yeah. Like, and, you have no idea what you're allowed to do, what the line is. And he wasn't really assaulting anyone? Uh, yeah. Huh. He, he was he, okay. He, he, he threw a punch right there. I mean, I guess throwing a bottle is assault, right? Yeah. Maybe. Depends That's on the definitely country. assault. Yeah. You said Avatar did it. I was like, holy yeah, shit. That was, cool. was like brilliant. That and was... You did it like automatically, right? That was karate kid stuff. Yeah, I had no idea that I did that. I, I remember just thinking, okay, don't let anything get in between them. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That, that was that was pretty badass. Um, also, actually, there is a story, like a quick one, for self-defense in Lithuania, in my country. A uh, robber came into a balcony, wanted to steal a bike. And uh, the guy came in, hit him with a wrench, and he got in trouble and in prison for hitting the guy in the wrench because the balcony doesn't count as private property. Oh. So welcome to self-defense. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you guys. I yeah. do got to head to the gym, but um, thanks for having me. And I'll see yeah, you. thanks so much for, for being here. You will see, champ. We'll see you Thank in season two. Champ, champ. Jeff. Champ, champ. We're going to have a champ, champ. I know who I'm going to be rooting for. <laughs> you want him to win so that you could say, "Oh, I almost won against winner like, of two championships." It's like when you're in any tournament, you don't want the guy that beat you to lose his next time. Now that's yeah. your favorite guy. Although Jeff yeah. Jeff Chan is an amazing guy. He is. Um, yeah, yeah. Jeff Jeff Chan's super fun. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, obviously I want him to win round two. Yeah, I was actually I was rooting for both of you, like besides myself obviously i wanted to do well but i was okay with not winning because i i am not the best guy in the group you know in terms of experience etc i was so happy to be in third place i know seth you have a different mentality you were just not happy like i barely give it justice in the editing i i gave a moment of you being upset about being second but like that was actually a much more longer it was, <laughs> serious it was pretty moment. me sitting you in like, front of the and sitting in front of rokas being like I should have done this. <laughs> I should have done this. Yeah. But then, yeah, I was rooting for both of you equally because, yeah, you guys are awesome. You, you, you deserved the win. But It's a conflicting feeling because I got into my into a headspace of, like, a really competitive headspace where I was like, yeah, no, I, I, I'm i going to win. But the way that Jeff beat me was, like, so definitive, and he earned it, too. Like, it was yeah. so slick that I had to, like – I had to draw, I had to reel it in and be like, okay, I'm just, uh, it's justified what happened. Everything's fair. Yeah. I'm not happy with it, but I am happy because I, you know, I like Jeff. And then yeah. it was a very interesting set of emotions to go on top of. Was what felt like uh, like a week of of I guess like like me being on my worst behavior. If I get into this many fights in an average week, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was fun though. It was, overall, yeah. it was very enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was actually, now that you said it, it's really cool that the, I mean, it's, it sucks, <laughs> but it's cool that the win was even by one point, but it was definitive. Like, it wasn't a one point because of some random, oh, maybe he won this, maybe not. Like, like yeah. the defining point of the win, it was okay. It was like, okay, well, he got an armbar mm -hmm. for you. That's where exactly. he got the extra point. It's still, right. when I was editing the whole thing, though, I realized, oh man, so many moments could have been there where Jeff didn't get like a <laughs> single point. Like, you know, he could have like... That's what makes Jeff Chan, Jeff Chan, baby. I guess so. But still, it's just like, it, it, the, the my point is that in a way, it was definitive the win because of that uh -huh. event. But at the same yep. time, it wasn't. Because like, yeah. if he would have, you know, did something slightly different in a scenario or... Uh -huh. It's just like, yeah. And, and uh, kudos to Jeff Chan that he put it on record that it's like the win wasn't really definitive in a way. Like anybody could have won, or especially like I don't you. know. I disagree. So like, I, it, the thing it's it's over. We can't redo it, so it is yeah. definitive. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like like that's just how it ended. There's no other like ifs, ands, or buts. It went that way. There's no like oh it could have because it didn't. So I think that in the nature of it is the definitive okay. part. Yeah. yeah, it was close though. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was close. I agree with that. It was close. It was down to the wire. 
Yeah. Well, we're looking at Poop Man, the Poop infamous man. Poop Man, Poop Man and Blood Man. Uh, Seth, mm -hmm. now, since we have you here, what was your experience like? Because we're coming out of that shower. We have no clue what's going to happen. I thought this is going to be a prison shank experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, no, what did, did you too. think? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember thinking, wow, it really smells in here. <laughs> I did not smell it. God damn it. And That's then I take a deep breath. I was like, breathe in through your nose so you'd smell <laughs> it. Yeah, I thought you were giving me like just same here. breathing advice. And I right. was like, yeah, the same right. here. <laughs> Which made me really think I was going to have to fight even more. So, Because he hadn't told me to breathe yet. So I was like, oh man, if Jeff needs right. to breathe, this is trouble. <laughs> so I remember... Uh, and then you know walk out and i see poop man and the whole time i was just thinking how can i get around him mm. so i start to walk towards my it'll probably look like the left for you guys but i try to walk towards my right to open that little area to the left where there's no blood man and no poop man mm. and then on my way out i smash my shin on um on one of those little benches but oh, thank shoot. goodness that we had shin guards on the whole time. I didn't right. feel it. Okay. But <laughs> I get out of the room and I hear everybody go, was that his head? <laughs> you also hit your head. You also hit your helmet like like, like on the corner. You didn't notice? No? I don't know. It's it's on record. Like when Poop Man gets poop in your eye, technically. Yeah. Like you hit the... With a helmet, you hit the corner of the wall pretty hard. Like there's Did a I? Pop sound. Yeah, maybe if we'll get to it, you, you'll see uh it's still the helmet prob you might have you know the helmet gives quite some space so you might have yeah get through it but it happened I, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't uh, register i know i had no idea hmm. i got was, to see this yeah we'll, we'll get to it yeah yeah oh, what was your thoughts your thoughts about the other guys watching them perform after everything is edited um i remember thinking with ramsey i remember thinking that was pretty cool. Maybe not the yeah. best answer, but that was yeah. pretty cool. And I remember yeah. thinking, Mike, why would you kick him? Now he's yeah. closer to the door. <laughs> I just it's remember good. thinking, why would any of them try to touch him right here? Uh, uh, he did run away at some point. Oh, and then I remember thinking, Ramsey, Ramsey, don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny because for me, you know, I was I went in there as the savior. I, that was the only thing I had in my mind, and I did not mind touching the poop. Oh, and I yeah, was like, that's right, you did too. I I went through my mind like, you know what? Okay, f fuck it, you know, screw it. This is like, this is life is more important than poop. Uh -huh. Only later I realized it just doesn't make sense. You know, this could be infections, this could be AIDS. I wasn't smart enough. You guys were. Like you and Jeff, essentially, and Matt, right? You were the free ones who... Who ran, yeah. Ran, right. Well, Jeff, Jeff, what I didn't realize was he moved out of the area so fast that it didn't even give time for Poop Man to corner him. Yeah. 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 He had this troublesome moment just right now when he exited to the left. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. Poop Man cornered him. So he might have been in trouble if Poop Man would have been aggressive, but luckily he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, he just ran out. And I was like, Poop, why did I know he does? Poop Man's pretty passive until you push his buttons. Right. <laughs> like, and, and Jeff Phillips, oh, Jeff, Jeff, uh, that was not the intention. Like, he was not instructed to attack unless, like, somebody really provoked him, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So it was almost like he was sedated or. Right. And then, like, it, it's cool that you guys are so compassionate that you want to help your fellow man. But can you, <laughs> if, like, if there's a grown man covered in shit. Yeah, can, can you, you call a man in poop a man? <laughs> yeah. Can, can you really help him in that given moment? Or is he beyond help? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So Yeah, depending on what context, you, I may have had to. Like, yeah. if we were in a public restroom, I'm out of there. There's no yeah. chance. I was. This went a lot longer than I wanted it to. Um, mm. I couldn't tell who was talking, and I spent a lot of time like trying to <laughs> dissect it and figure out who the heck is fussing and like because one guy kept being like i'm sorry i'm sorry and then yeah. the other one, but one of them but the other one and he was like um like one of them was saying something and you can see a part oh wait so can you go back yeah if sure. not uh, if not it's fine where, I can yeah i can i can where, where are we going Tell me. i will um go back i want to see if i hit my head oh no we're you're next i right? just went or you just went? Oh shit, I, I completely missed it. Wait, where are you? 
I'm right here. Was that you? That's Ramsey. Wait. You okay. went too far back. I was like 10 seconds back. <laughs> okay, Jeff. So I have 100% gone through every single one of these videos now. And YouTube has a feature where if you hit the period button, you can Yeah, go. but this is actually not YouTube. This is like the streaming platform. So uh, Okay. There gotcha. you go. Yeah, that's you. Let's let's look at this. So you're trying Oh, okay. You were mixed oh, in Matt together simultaneously with Matt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you got frustrated because you couldn't hear what people talking and poop. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorite phrases from the whole series. Okay. So, so. There's Matt out. Look, look, look. Oh, so, so close. I, he got me with his other hand. Look, so look, you're going to get bam. You, oh, you yeah, that? I kind of did. That was like, bam. Yeah, that was like. Tell, I even fixed it. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it just, but I guess the poop in your eye was more concerning than the wall. Yeah, 100%. So, but then, you know, I, I think, again, the helmet has space in front of it. So that's nothing, something to take into account for the scenario itself because, yeah. <laughs> He might That's... put poop right in my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this discussion between you guys. It's like, so if he puts poop in your eyes, that like a bad thing. Yeah, bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah bad. that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Seth, you were pretty quick at understanding the office scenario, right? You, you, you like it clicked with you, like. This oh is yeah. Happening. Um. So what's what's really funny about this one is I remember sitting down and thinking. Okay, I'm going to make this one look really good for the video, and I'm going to try and really, like, role play into this concept uh, of me getting fired. So I remember okay. trying to be like, no, like, I, I can't I can't lose my job. I appreciate and then, that. Yeah. And then when she stands up and goes and sits on the table, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get fought. Okay, all right, I'm out of here. Because <laughs> that whole time I was, like, trying to calm myself down a little bit for the idea that because Jeff was so sweaty – that somebody's kind of busting in the room or like something crazy was going to yeah. happen. And then it, when she put the pencil in her mouth, I was like, oh, this is okay. Yep. Got it. <laughs> and entirely what's happening right now. And then yeah. as soon as I, <laughs> I was crazy. I, I was so focused on, you know, that's the thing that's looking at my scenario. It's, it's kind of the, a good example of those guys who are so into self-defense Mm -hmm. that they always are in cell defense you know it's like yeah, they check every corner code red and, right yeah. they always like go they never use like the i don't know how you call the you no know, the, the parts where you pee as as a, as a guy they don't use that they go and close the doors because somebody might attack them like they're oh, hyper well, alert <laughs> and i was like i was like that i was like no this is not seduction this is seduction to kill me and I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I got it. Even if so, it took a long time. Rokas, you gotta be, you gotta be willing to give it to yourself. That you can just walk away from conversations if you want to. You know what I mean? Like you're allowed to do that. You don't have to be nice. I guess. Yeah, I am learning it. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> but but you're right. I think Jeff uh, Chan and I had that problem a little bit, where we were too much. Like we want to also be kind of polite at the same time. Uh -huh. And that was that was our trouble as well. You were you were fine though. You you whenever you realize this is bad, and also you thought about your real life situation as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, and Matt was yeah. the same way too. Matt was like, "My fiance is gonna watch this. I do not want to look bad at this." That's, that's yeah. No, I I just did. well, it was easy because I immediately knew exactly what was happening, and I remember being like, "Oh, yeah, out of here." <laughs> that which which would one hundred percent be. It might have even taken me like – I might have been two seconds faster if we hadn't this whole week been in a situation where we were like fighting. Because um, right. I, I, and I think you probably would be the same too to be honest. And same thing for Jeff where if, right. if we weren't like thinking yeah. this could turn into a fight yeah. at some point, yeah. we would probably have recognized that and gotten out of there pretty quick. It's true. I, I mean I was, also, I was also thinking, oh, this is scenario free – definitely fighting is going to happen. This one mm -hmm. is like, it's Matt closing the door. Is so funny. Yeah. Just like him not knowing what was coming and then closing the door. <laughs> I, it's, I love like, I love his using of objects like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, oh my gosh. The folder is he, so he, good. He, he 
ducks under MJ's arm mm -hmm. and all the way he's going for he's like yeah have a good life yeah yeah bye 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 bye, bye. He he's just like so quickly he's like off he's not gonna come back I love mm -hmm. it oh and then <laughs> Ramsey Ramsey, Ramsey. <laughs> it was fun this is, it was, this is this is pure comedy like, I was I, I, I'm so oblivious. Go ahead. Yeah, go you go um i was on my honeymoon when this came out and i was it was like i don't know i think like four in the morning my time when it came out and i remember watching this cackling in bed it's just so like funny. laughing so hard at this part ramsey's so funny um it's, it's it, yeah it's 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 i was when i was editing uh the whole thing there was there were a lot of moments where i was just laughing my ass off but this was uh -huh. one of the moments where i'm like i'm editing and i'm just laughing i think my neighbors would even hear me it was crazy and it's funny too it's kind of unintentional yep. <laughs> comedy and yep. he's good at telling it in retrospect and making uh -huh. it funny too but it just happened it's just something that happened and it's just so funny <laughs> and he's, he's he's like no i'm going and and He's like, wait, 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 maybe I should, maybe I should still talk. Uh huh. Looking back, I'm glad I bolted out of there so quick and didn't give uh, MJ a reason to be like, oh my God, he touched me. Yeah. Because that seems like that's a stress. Like, I, that's, that's a stress. yeah. I remember, like, when I was like dating, that I remember feeling like, okay, like, what happens if you, you know, run into the wrong girl who's like, gonna go crazy and like accuse you of stuff yeah because i mean like that's a thing that can happen um so that would have stressed me out big time well it's good you thought about it i never really thought about it before the scenario i guess it's not a common scenario in lithuania maybe yeah. we're very personal we're very kind of introverted and i think that's that's a problem because when these things happen we just don't talk about it and we go don't go on record so yeah. maybe that's why i was kind of not really set up to realize what's happening after i was like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. you were much more in tune also speaking of mike because so you know mike clearly obviously the best from all of us did it surprise you how he handled this one or <laughs> cute the chair back yeah he did he... so you know he goes to the, to the bath he, he's, he's great too. <laughs> Top of the head. Oh my gosh. I love the moment where he looks, he's gonna turn into the camera. That's kind of a gym moment from the <laughs> office. He's like, really? <laughs> Yeah, right. Mike is just always on. Yeah. <laughs> did it surprise you how he handled the situation? Or you're like, oh, this is Mike. It did. It did surprise me because I expect him to at least stammer a little bit. I was like, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna like flub something. And he just didn't. Yeah. He was just on it. That was a great discussion too. I, I almost feel too bad I couldn't put more of into it into the episode. Like MJ, yes. we, we had a, like a whole long conversation about the implications of that scenario. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Oh and then the, is this your favorite scenario, Seth? <laughs> um, Shank Tank. I mean, I do think. I think looking back, yeah. Shank Tank. If there was one. I totally agree with all of the scoring that I had no issues with the scoring and I will never have issues with scoring because everyone gets scored the same way. So it shouldn't matter. Um, but True. if there was one that I feel like I could have gotten points on, I think it was shank tank. You, I, if you were looking yeah. from a competitive perspective against everybody else. Yeah. But because yeah. it was derived on, you know, whether or not I died, you know, then that, you know, uh, then that makes sense that I didn't win any. But an, just, al an alternative I was thinking is adding up the number of stabs that everyone received from all of the six and then ranking you. So how we did the others. You know what I just realized too? That I just, I have a gripe. I just remembered. You Go. added so many stabs, Rokus, in the editing <laughs> that I feel like we're not stabs. Uh, like the sound in this look, it looks, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and I remember watching it back in slow motion being like, he didn't even touch me. <laughs> okay. Yes and no. I I'll tell you what happened. So part of me, yes, wanted to drive the narrative of badass of stabbing. And sure. I was like, I was really meticulous. Like this episode took a, like if I wouldn't have added the stab effects on the counters, I would have nailed the editing like in a few days because it's it was fairly quick. Yeah. But then but then I was going through like frame by frame. I was like looking at it and so moments I was hesitant. I was like, 
Yeah. Mm, because I think, and then I had to debate myself because like the, I, I had to imagine there was a knife pointing mm -hmm. out, like sticking out because they were, they were in markers. Well, the, and let's the knife say, you know, that way though. Yeah, but but still, you know, it's it's it's. I mean, if it, I'm holding it like psycho, was, so okay, was, so like. Was it like double this. ended? No, I'm thinking psycho. Sorry, psycho movie. You know, like so. Um, let's okay. <laughs> let's, 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 so yeah, right. So so you know, there were sometimes moments where it was like this, and I was like, I guess you know, it's leaning in, and and most of the times, it was already like 25 stabs already. So I'm yeah. like. That person is dead, so I might as well just add it. And it, I looked at it also bef bes in besides. Oh, Ranton is here. Uh, just saying hi, Ranton. Future contender. I want to so, find the comment section. Uh, I guess you just have to open the original. I agree. I agree, Ranton. I pulled it up. What did he say? He oh, said um, Seth got robbed. So Ranton says Seth got robbed. Okay, so. I think we were debating this with Jeff Phillips as well. Uh, I was I was telling, because I'm with you. I think the scoring, I have no problem with it. But I do agree that it was debatable. Where I was, I, I sent the video. I was like, Seth might have survived, and we're like, yeah. But at the same time, you know, it happened. Like it depends uh, where the stab was. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes yeah, and also, it was, yeah. it's only <laughs> sorry. Can you say that again? I, I cut up. You, you cut up. Conclusive, like the way it's run, and there's no way that you can make it conclusive mm. without actually stab each other. I think. Yeah. yeah um, the I definitely remember afterwards. I had the cleanest shirt. One hundred percent wasn't even close. I had the cleanest shirt. Um, but also, like cleanest is just comparing it to you guys, not to how many times I've been stabbed. Mm -hmm. I would say as far as marks go, there was probably like 18 marks on my shirt. But 18 is a lot divided by five, you know, if you're regarding how many times you've been stabbed in your organs. So mm -hmm. Ranton says that to make it up, Seth, sh you should stab Rokas. With your knife. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Done. <laughs> uh, I'll get you with yeah. a butter knife or something. Yeah. But you know that was the interesting part because in the comments section, because when I was uh, writing the script for to narrate the story of uh, episode six, I, I kept emphasizing like Seth did great, but uh -huh. still died. But and still died. Comments, yeah. Right. And some of the comments like, how can you do great and still get and still die? I'm like, of course. No, but I'm like, of course you can. Like, I mean, look at, I mean, very looking at numbers, Ramsey, right? Like uh -huh. 40 something stabs. And you got like five stabs and you got like a hip toss. And and Jeff Phillips made the point himself that, that if that would have been concrete, you know, that's the inconclusive part. Yeah. You would have knocked out the guy out or, or yeah. you know, you kick the guy and he hits the wall and knocks his head into a concrete wall. Yeah. Like, like I think you did awesome. And, yeah. uh, but I, then it's just, you didn't get points. <laughs> I walked away feeling like, mm, that's promising. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it's better than um better than it could have been yeah right afterwards i was like i feel okay with that i feel good about mm -hmm. that and then i remember thinking i want to watch jeff go now <laughs> <laughs> jeff was actually concerned i think it's in the final edit but he was concerned that because when you were coming out everyone was like oh seth did great seth did great and uh, we we're like Seth, seth definitely got some points yeah and it turns out you didn't but just yeah. like and but but jeff was really concerned like jeff chan was really concerned that you did so great that you got points so he yeah his competitiveness turned on and he's like damn it damn but it then, i probably know. unlocked something in jeff yeah but then huh. you know he, he died but yeah uh Everybody. since we're since we're speaking about it, I, I could put up the episode six, but uh, Seth, you have a filming soon, right? So you probably need to go prepare, or you still have a few moments. What's um, situation? I've got I've got probably fifteen minutes. If you want to, oh, perfect. Yeah, Is I can roll. Enough? I'll just roll out the episode because we're talking about it anyway. You know. Yeah, the... I'll hang around for my portion. Out of their exhaust spend, I'll just. <laughs> and uh, actually, also, oh, Jeff Phillips left. I was about to take my bathroom break, but let's <laughs> let's let's do this. Uh, okay, so if you want, I can just run this whole thing. Oh, I know you can, but I'll, I'll leave you with Jeff when he comes back. Okay. Uh, I just have a question though. Um, yeah. So we're sitting in the kitchen. You didn't go first, did you? No, you weren't first. No, I. Ramsey was first. Ramsey was first because I think he he was considering his injury. 
and he wanted to go first to just get it out of the way. Okay. So, so what what were your thoughts like? Because that was, I think that was stressful. Us sitting in the kitchen, hearing other guys screaming and things bashing around. What was your experience of waiting for your part? I don't remember feeling nervous by this time. I don't think. Um, I remember feeling because I remember feeling nervous a lot. I don't remember feeling nervous for this one for some reason. Um, good point. Maybe. Yeah. I remember feeling kind of locked in and right. kind of also just like whatever happens happens do your best you know, figure it out yeah. um also i remember thinking um i remember not knowing how good jeff chan was with knife defense so i was like mike mike has a real chance here to do really well because he's probably worked on knife defense the most out of all of us um, I was like, I've just got to be really diligent about getting the arm. Um, and then I also remember trying to, trying to like do some fancy stuff in the middle. What was the fancy? What was the motivation? Was that I already died, so I might as well do something cool? Like that was Jeff Chan's thinking, or were you just like, I'm just gonna be awesome? No, I just remember thinking, um, let me try some stuff out and keep just to keep people away from me. Cause I don't, I don't do this stuff very often. Um, so I remember thinking, well, let's, let's do some cool stuff while we go. Like, um, like in the first round, I threw more sidekicks, but they didn't work. So, I mean, that one, that one sidekick was amazing. I mean, that first one didn't work out. The one worked really well because he kind of hung back a little bit for a second mm. and he let me have that time. Um, this is a new room that you're not used to. So like you're, it's not. Like uh, you can see it in the um, in the circle drill, like when you don't know how far stuff is behind you, and you're not used to that area, it's really easy mm -hmm. to find yourself hitting a wall really quick. Yeah. Um, and that's I and I fell because of that reason earlier. So like I remember thinking like, okay, how far can I move backwards before I can start to do stuff? At one point, I tried to jump off the wall. I think. Like at one point, I tried to. Put my foot on the wall and superman punch off the wall but he doesn't <laughs> I wish that happened. he like doesn't close the distance or something i remember i just like kind of kicked the wall yeah. um and then the sidekick so i ran through the sidekick a bunch of times in my head um i've broken it down in little two videos in two hours and I 100% threw a sidekick and then ran in and then headbutted them and tried to go for control, which yeah. a lot of people were like, Mike specifically, was like, why did you go back in for more? And it's yeah. because there, we, it was 20 seconds. Like, we had 20 seconds to defend it. If I would have ran away and, like, stayed back, that would have kept me safe for, yeah. what, yeah. four seconds? Yeah. Um, and, that, and we were right at the beginning of the round, so it wouldn't have, like, I maybe could have sidekicked him again yeah. i think the one thing that would have been really effective that i'm i don't think i'm i wish i would have tried but i wish i would have put a little more emphasis on was or not emphasis on i wish i didn't know any of these guys so i could have punched them in the head harder just to see what the reaction is hmm. just to see if there's like any more shelling up yeah. That's that's like one curiosity that I had. Um, by grappling, there, there's no fear to stop him from stabbing. Yeah. And when I went with Aaron in the circle drill, and I threw that head kick, he immediately was like, uh, and I don't know if that was because I heard him. I hope I didn't, or if he was like a good actor, and he was like, oh yeah, I would. This this would probably suck. Yeah. So I go for a side kick there, and I think that's Aaron too, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Aaron was the first one, and it, it was. It's interesting because Aaron. I think everybody did best with Aaron, and I wonder if that's because of his size or because we're all fresh. But I think everybody got the least stabs with Aaron. Like if we put it together, I, I when editing, I noticed that. But yeah. maybe I remember thinking later. I wish I would have gone last. I actually. <laughs> Every time I should have gone last. I. I, tried I to, oh, that's the one that I tried to jump off the wall. Um, oh okay but yeah i was actually to be honest that's what i did i because i was uh, you know but that part part of that was because i was organizing and i needed to film up think about filming by yeah. then we all knew the challenge and i was like i might as well go last and i i, I did take into consideration that 
you know, that'll give me an edge, but you know, that's yeah. competition. So. Yeah, right. Um, and yeah, maybe one of the reasons why I managed to survive because I went last, so I can't take that out, out of the equation. Yeah, one little thing that made it hard was how small the marker is, and you, you can't really tell which hand it's in. Yeah. But again, it was that small for everyone, so it's like, you know. True. It's a good thing. Um, this one, I remember thinking, gosh, these guys are squirming. <laughs> this guy stabbed me a lot. Uh, it was Alex, right? Was that, that Alex, was your nemesis? That, it was. that was your big nemesis. <laughs> My nemesis. What's so funny is that he, we were both like so nice to each other outside of it. Yeah. But Alex has got that dog in him, you know. So when Alex is on, he's on. Yeah. And then I remember thinking, yeah, take this, and then being like, <laughs> oh, he stabbed me a bunch. Though I didn't even realize he did that. I didn't realize he stabbed me that many times in the lung. That, that was my surprise, too. I, I realized we all got stabbed quite a bit. But when I was editing and counting the stabs, as you said, yeah. some of them were debatable. But it, eventually, I'm like, I didn't believe it. I'm like, initially, I'm like, cut, 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 cut. And I see, like, the 40 number. I'm like, or like, Ooh. I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. So that's that's why, yeah, I think yeah. it was good 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 decision to count them. But I didn't realize it during the experience. Yeah. Especially. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, I feel confident in this one the most um yeah uh although he was much stronger than i expected so this and then the headbutt afterwards i think that could have done enough to wobble him yeah um yeah. uh but then immediately going for the knife you know it was dangerous it was not, not my smartest move uh, um, if you still have a few minutes seth can i give over the show for you i gotta go yes. <laughs> take a bathroom break i'll be back yeah, in a moment that's fine. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and then who's up next? Jeff? Yeah, so Jeff was interesting. I, I will admit that I've watched everybody else much less than I've watched him. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh, if he shoots for double, like, that's, that's dangerous because then people can stab you from yeah. the top. Yeah. Or I guess stab you from the bottom, but to the top of your back. Yeah. Um, What Rokas did where he kind of just squirmed up until he had like a really high mount with yep. the guy's arms pinned like this. That was really interesting. And I thought a bunch about how you could isolate to have grabs on just the arms in a way that you kind of like immobilize them. And pinning them against the ground worked pretty well. My thought yeah. process was to pin them against the wall. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's a, when we do knife defense, we it to one of three areas so it could be the environment could be the other person could be to yourself mm. and i think rokas had it pinned between the two of them like he was lying on top of him or underneath him oh. kind of stuck there like near his throat yeah and he in and, and wore it across his cheek and it wasn't until mm. they got up so yeah he kind of had a wedge sandwich between the two of them in there and it Right, it, it, but I, that was good. easily no arguing that it was the best round. It was yeah. we're, we're talking about your round where um, hmm. you pinned the guy's arm down to the ground. Part luck, part whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, I was talking about how good of an idea that I was thinking. Okay, let me grab his arm and pin it to the wall. Yep. And mm -hmm. pinning it to the ground and and being able, I think. You, I thought you were in like a high mount, like a yeah. Like a, like Essentially, a it was mount. like a high mount, uh, knees on arms. It was like a very favorable position. And yeah. He was kind of scratching my face, but as Jeff said, it was like a facelift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely look a little different. <laughs> yeah, it came out more pretty. <laughs> I guess. It took five years off your life. Those wrinkles. Yeah. Right. Extensive training. Uh. Yeah, so so you thought, Seth, that Mike will uh, get some points? Yeah, I thought Mike would probably get some points, was my guess. Um, and beca because his positioning was really good, um, like this here. This is something I wish I would have done more, is get into that spot. Mike, because he's a little bit smaller, probably had a harder time. Um, but if I, could, if I could consistently get to that position, I think I would have been okay. Mm. Um, I think yeah. what's hard too is that, like, I had, I th I'm gonna still come up, so maybe I can show. But there was a moment where I pinned the arm, stretched out, 
and uh, not I think it was with Aaron, yeah, the first fight. So he couldn't pass away the knife. Uh -huh. But the problem is that until you get to that point, it's likely that you still get stabbed a few tough. times. It's tough so to you're get there clean, 100%. Right, exactly. So you're holding the guy you're pinning, but probably you're like, you know, blood is pouring out of whatever holes mm -hmm. from you. So, yeah. so that's also tricky. It's not just about winning the whole thing, but it's also getting to that point. So it's really, yeah. it's really hard. It's just so yeah. hard. And that's, that's what most knife defense forces and knife defense demos do. They cut to that point where you've already got hold of the uh, weapon bearing link, which is the yeah. easy Like, they're cutting out the hardest part. And mm -hmm. so they make people doing the courses think, oh, I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. that's the hardest part. The 100%. Like, and they bypass that because it's so big. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I totally agree. Um, karate is pretty infamous for that, in my opinion, in, in helping people realize they're really good at something that's like the easiest part. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, you got the arm, and now we get to the arm bar, and then we take him down. It's like, okay, how did you get that arm? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. by a long shot. Yeah, Aikido has the tooth, like somebody is holding a knife, and then while you respond they don't do anything uh -huh. but then even still like like holding a knife is one thing but a lot of the knife attackers they're gonna bring the knife out of a pocket and just stab you until you see it but you're not working on that it's just like yeah so many things that's the part i hate about some of the traditional martial arts who show knife defense it's like yeah. giving false confidence i'm like 100%. why would why would you do that it's like somebody can like i i had a, five guys attack me once like many years ago but the first thing, I hit one, and I was standing there, not running away, because we don't run away in martial arts. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm looking for knives in their hands, like if somebody has a knife. And I'm like, that's such a stupid idea. Like, I should have just ran away, but that was my martial arts oh. conditioning. Yeah, I mean, so. it makes sense that you would look for a knife in somebody's hand. Like, that's... I, I'm, I feel like I'm constantly looking for stuff in people's hands, mm. like, all the time. Even when yeah. there's no threat, I'm just like... Looking at people's hands because people are weird, especially over here. I don't know if you guys have any weirdos, but we definitely yes. do. Um, shoot, what was I gonna say? Um, uh, looking at knives, looking for hands. Uh, well, it was something from a minute ago. It's fine. You're good. Um, yeah, that's that's my bit. My go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh wait, or is that Matt? No, Matt. That's I think Matt's Matt up. Me. Matt, it's like I didn't include how much he was swearing. Oh my gosh. You heard it, right? Because yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I think I, I was remember, in the zone, I didn't, but I heard you guys discussing about it. I remember thinking while he was going, like, oh man, Matt is Matt is racking up some points right now. And I thought there's no way he's not. Yeah. He was cussing, like it, the the yeah. final editing does not do justice to how much he was cussing, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. He's he's really good like that. Like I said, yeah, he goes from placid to psychopath like that. He's just yeah. he can switch it so quick and is so good at it. Mm -hmm. And Seth, you did an experiment recently where you used like swearing in like a simulated MA fight, and it worked, right? It was like it gave superpowers or something. Um, it definitely added some like a different level, like a different variable. Um, I can't speak for so I had Mike do it. I can't speak yeah. for Mike. But I remember in that moment being like, oh, okay, and like thinking about the words he was saying while it was happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. It's but like no, I... sports psychology, the arousal levels. I think it builds up your arousal. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it does It does have some kind of effect. I think I've seen it played out as well where it takes away from your fine motor skills, but your sense and your aggression and things increase. So it's kind of... It's good in some respects and bad in others. It's yeah. applying at the right time, I guess. Yeah. It's like you would in football if people flap each other to get them hyped up and get them more browsed. It's kind of mm -hmm. on the same thing. Yeah, see, I, I've never, even even playing football, a lot of people like talk trash and like in the middle of pancaking somebody, like talk trash to them. I could never, mm. I just couldn't get it. Um, I just always felt like being quiet for me was like my zone. Because otherwise, yeah. I would have to think about talking to the trash. Yeah, like yeah. it's not natural for me to feel to do. Um, yeah. I'm, it's something that I'm sure I could I could get to do eventually. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, 
this one I was actually kind of happy. This is one I said where I was holding it on the side. I still yeah. got snapped three times before, so you know, blood is pouring out of me. Yeah. But I was like, you know, I could hold it here and uh he eventually switches knife, but he doesn't get it with me. He's just punching me with a free hand. Yeah. And there he fits the knife and that was time. So I was also like, okay, that was close enough. Like uh -huh. this might have yeah, been a survival. Yeah. So but yeah, but as I said, we all did fairly well with Aaron. I think the other guys were more killing in the killing moods. Uh -huh. But, you know, Adrian, the rugby player, didn't want us to survive for sure. Yeah, this is one where I'm like, I I'm already dead, so might as well, like, yeah, I'll just yeah, rest for the smart. next one. <laughs> I guess smart. it's smart. At the same time, in reality, you know, I wouldn't do it. All right. But if it's competition, so. And this was like, ah. Oh. What did, did you think, Seth? Did you think about the object something? Did you think about using it? Uh, I thought about it, and then he came in so fast and pushed it over. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> but I realized. I was much more thinking about the object in his hand. But the thing is, it turns out, and I thought about it later, and a lot of common people said that, like, you, we could have took the thing and hold it and just create a barrier with it. That probably, um, probably would have been like. I don't Good. think it would have done anything, to be honest. I think no. you could have tried, but yeah. ultimately... Um, maybe if you could have gotten a hold of it in time. Hmm. But I think it's too risky to not put any emphasis on the knife. Because in order to pick that thing up, you gotta do it with two hands. Yeah. So like yeah, maybe you could like all start the... pushing it in, but he's probably just gonna smack that thing down. He's probably gonna yeah. do it. If it were something like a table, Mm. On like a hard table, maybe. But All I right. feel like you, in, in order to have like a, a good shield, it has to like it has to reflect a shield in some way. Like it has to be lightweight enough mm. that you can hold on to it. It has to be uh, difficult for them to get around. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't feel like if I had had grips on it, that it would have been strong enough to do much with. That's a good point. I didn't consider that. Like, as you said, like, it's it's such an, an unconven inconvenient object to hold that probably he would just smack it out of the hands. So, Yeah, um, I think I think I was thinking wrestling the whole time because that was going to be what I could really use to control for 20 seconds. Like a sidekick, it did a good job of controlling the distance for three seconds, four seconds. You know, and you can't spam those, but wrestling, once you get a hold of somebody, you can use it to control them for a while. Granted, these are close, but they're going to try and be close anyway. They have a knife. Yeah. While we still have you, since this is the moment uh, of big guys coming in, uh, what yeah. did you think when they came in? Um, I remember thinking... Um, were, were you hating guys, Jeff Phillips? <laughs> um, no, I remember thinking, why weren't these guys here the whole time? And you know what? Uh, it, there's nothing I could do about it now. I might as well just hope that I get them in a small space and can mitigate it for as long as possible or a really big space so I can run away from them. Um, but I remember thinking uh, everybody has to go against them. So it's it is me against them, but it's just as much me competing with them against everybody else. Yeah. So I was trying pretty hard to just think, okay, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. They are big, but like I was big. nervous. <laughs> they I freaked me out. I remember Mike like standing behind him, like looking up at him and like I mean well, Mike, they he, were he, huge. They were huge. Like, I think the camera didn't do justice in most uh, moments to mm -hmm. how big they are. Like, I, I felt intimidated. I was like, I was, I honestly realized how Mike probably feels with big buys. They're the really time. big. And what's interesting, and I should have thought about this, to be honest. Yeah. Guys that big don't do martial arts. Mm. That I need to. <laughs> they don't mm. need to, 100%. Guys don't try to fight dudes nah. that look like that. Nah. So <laughs> they, they never have, like... Like I, I took martial arts from a young age. Nobody ever tried me. Uh, there, I never had a need to use my martial arts. Hmm. Um, the only fight I'd ever been in was because of like middle school hormones. So hmm. the big, like you just don't see a lot of really big guys 
that are in self-defense martial arts specifically mm. like combat sports yeah sure but self-defense based stuff you i feel like you very rarely see big guys in self-defense classes because mm. like who's gonna fight them yeah that's a good point they've never yeah, been never tried it's like most most nightclub bouncers just get away with being big mm-hmm. uh, they don't have to be able to fight they just right do, basically yeah, yeah. 100 yeah. percent. but yeah i also remember thinking i'm gonna kick that tall guy in the head <laughs> <laughs> tall guy in the head well yeah. you're exceptional at kicking i was gonna I go for it at some point i was thinking like i'll jump off a wall and kick him <laughs> i'll like anthony pettis and <laughs> but i remember thinking i've got to at least try <laughs> uh he's six, know, yeah he's six foot nine and the other one would be six seven six eight six, so nine. so the highest i've ever kicked was seven one. Oh, you, you could do it then so did you possible. like jump off a wall or what <laughs> i had to jump so i would have to jump off two feet the the, the kick would be like if i jumped spun and then did an outside crescent kick to the back so if i was like Jump, spin, <laughs> crescent kick. Damn. But that would be very difficult to pull off. So, it almost sounds like the what's that Bruce Lee movie where he fights the basketball player at the end? Oh, um, death Game something. Game, Game of, of death. death. Yeah, they're, they're all kind of named the exact same. Thing. Yeah, yeah, they're all. They're like, all in fact, some movies even have two names. I've given up on figuring out which one. I didn't watch yeah. those movies very much as a kid. But yeah, yeah, that one, that one, that one. Yeah, yeah. All right, fellas, I got to roll. Thank you. Yeah, for pleasure. Me. So Thank you for putting happy. Whole thing together. Sure. Thank you for being I'm, part I'm of it. Very glad I got to be a part of it. And I feel like a lot of people have been curious. I, I don't, unless something changes, I don't think I'm part of season two. Is that is that fair to assume? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I but think it's fair season to three. Season three, I, I <laughs> could I could be back by season three for sure. Um. I also, I think it's fitting to have Jeff Chan be the one person from season one in mm. season two because he's the champ. Mm. You know what no, I mean? If you're, Jeff, you're champ unless Jeff – Unless <laughs> if Jeff Chan didn't go. What yeah. I, I did think about um, I would feel an obligation to go if Jeff wasn't going mm. because, mm. you know, like that's – redemption arc you know mm. but if he's going then he's got to defend his he's got to defend he'll fight character. for the both of you this is hard because i've got a lot of people that i'm rooting for i'm rooting for ran um um if seth doesn't join in season two it means he hates the shallow temple <laughs> i am rooting <laughs> for ran i'm rooting for jesse obviously um I've, I've never met jordan um um i'm not sure how to pronounce his name um levy uh, uh nathan levy just, nathan. Uh, okay yeah. um I've I've followed on him on Instagram for a long time. Yeah. I don't know the basketball guy. Yeah, he he has a karate background as well, right? Not that mm-hmm. he does. He does. Um, we have two karate people. I'm trying to think of who else is going to be. We have a secret contender who agreed. We have not announced yet, but I can give a like a surprise information. Here, is there any context that you can give me that I would know? Uh karate related. Uh, super fast. He's good. Oh. Some people claim that. He's, oh, interesting. He's... I know who it is. I know who it is. Okay, I can see it. It's very interesting. Yeah, so he's on board. We haven't announced it yet, but he signed up. So, so yeah. That's surprising. Yeah, it didn't. It came out of nowhere, but uh, it happened. I know. Yeah. I know exactly when it happened too. That's crazy. Ah, okay. Okay. Smart man. Smart man. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Jeff is going to have a hell of a competition. <laughs> a part of me is happy. I'm not contending in season two. I've it's thought about be... how I would fare in season two. I think I would do okay. I think I, I, I think I, I would do okay. You're a beast, man. Yeah. I, I, th- I will admit that this has um, boosted my confidence a bit in, Same here. Yeah. in like this, uh, in these aspects. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Dang, this is gonna be a fun one. I I don't I like I think at some point maybe it was on your Instagram stories you talked about um you were like I think the guy's probably I am rooting for you, Ran. Don't. Yeah, Rant, and I was just about to say the same thing. Like, don't like, even. Seth just um, said said that. <laughs> the time went over. Um, what was he saying? Oh, I so I'm really conflicted because I would, I had so much fun. Hmm. 
if it was a, a little bit less of a turnaround, I would probably be like really gunning to come. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's I, I'm very conflicted on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it was it's the similar discussion for me. It, it was easier for me to make the choice to not contend because I really want to make season two better. And I know that sure. me not contending and just directing will make it better. Uh -huh. But but it was also like a conflicting feeling. Part of me wanted to be like, I want to do this again, uh, bond yeah. with the guys and have that challenge. Uh -huh. But at the same time, part of the other part of me is like, ah, oh, you know, this is like, it's intense. There's so much stress. It and... was. It's really easy to feel like you want to do it now that it's over. Right. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that many days in a row of being that stressed, yeah. it was tough. I, I think it wasn't even that it, it was physically grueling. But I think it wasn't even just that. I think it was also just – I think the only – some of the only things that made it easier were that I liked you guys so much. So we were all going through it together. So I was like, oh, yeah, no, this is fine. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, what was I – no, I'm definitely interested to see how it goes, though. I'm very curious, and it, it's going to be fun to watch from an outside perspective. And also the whole time while you guys are there, I'm just going to be jealous. Oh. <laughs> we'll miss you for sure like like uh, we were before yeah, you jumped if you guys, in if you guys want to like have me come out and just like watch <laughs> yeah right like, like uh, <laughs> special guest yeah that's right oh yeah. i come in if 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 we were closer i come in at the very end with like a, a horde of people it's just like da, 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 and then they have to you know We'll, we'll figure out the, the logistics. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah. I thought for a moment you're coming to Australia. But actually, season three, uh, we still haven't spoken much about it, but it's likely that it's not going to be in Australia anymore because yeah. the facility is getting destroyed. Right. So we may actually move either to somewhere super cool or the States. So it's going to be much more accessible, too. So yeah. anyway, but season two, first we need to pull off season, season I was going to say, you guys get season two nailed down. I'm excited yeah. to see that. Yeah. Um, it has gotten me very <laughs> it has gotten me very interested in wanting to do game shows though like i've mm. like i've really wanted to find um uh american gladiator i don't think it's running anymore yeah that's i remember that one there was a show called the titan that the rock was running that's not going anymore mm. but yeah i want to i want to show myself off in, in in game show fashions now i didn't realize I, I wanted this but now i do you know no, but actually, as I, I was about to say that you, uh, before you jumped in, we were discussing with Jeff that you and Mike, a lot of the cool moments were because of you guys, you talked something, you made some some funny jokes or something. It's just like, yeah, it was really cool to have you, uh, you you elevated the show to the next level. So I really appreciate that. That's that's why we are going to miss you. Ranton is going to need to take your place. And he definitely <laughs> so. will. He definitely will. <laughs> Except it'll be like a bunch of memes. Like <laughs> it won't be like I'm gonna kick this guy in the head. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna be like I'm going to. I don't oh, know. I, like, I don't know. He's down. brilliant, man. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That's a that's that's a strategy. Nobody wants to fight a naked guy, you know. No. No. Oh, All Jeff, right, Jeff. Write that down. <laughs> That is true. All right. I yeah. got to run, guys. Thank well, cool. you so much. See Thank you, Seth. See Bye. you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay. So we have uh, we have the last episode to air. So I'm actually going to just uh, put it on. Then we'll do some Q&A. My heart pounding. Oh, my and actually, I am standing behind. Uh, actually, I see Ranton is around. So, so I'll actually talk right to you, Ranton. Uh, right after we finish this episode, uh, let me know in the comments if you'd be up to join us for a little bit to talk about your participation in Season 2. I'll send you a link and uh, we can have a quick chat. So let me know if you're up for it and I'll send you that link uh, in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, Episode 7, the last episode. This was an interesting moment to uh, edit because I, I, I felt emotional about the whole thing. And it all, kind of that's the, the way I was trying to structure the whole uh, thing so that whoever wasn't there could have a feeling for, you know, what happened for us and would feel like as they are part of the experience. And I wanted to give that sense of, wow, this is wrapping up and we're kind of sad to yeah. say bye, but but we're also still rivals. It was kind of a unique moment. And yeah, it was yeah. funny. It was funny to have that experience between being rivals and friends at the same time. Did you notice that uh, as the host, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, there wasn't too much tension up until right up until people had to fight. 
Mm, and yeah. and even at that stage, there wasn't a lot of it. it. I think it was emotional. I think Seth and Mike fighting each other was emotional uh, because they're such good friends. Mm. Uh, I saw Mike put his game face on, especially after you got that little cheap shot on him. I could just see the anger. So, like, everyone was really friendly up until just moments before those fights. And even then, like, I mean, Jeff was the same throughout. Like, he didn't, you know, he was, was ne never angry. He was just emotionless the whole time. And apart He's, from when he was You time, know, Jeff Chan, also, he he has a good poker face because I spoke to him. Uh, he would look like he's not uh, tired. He's not... Uh, hurt you know he's not like uh he doesn't have any pains or whatever and he's not stressed but it turns out he was but he's very good at yeah. putting a poker face but he was also very cool he didn't mind any any like he for him the hardest challenges were the most fun so you know he's crazy in a good way but yeah but uh, so the tension between us wasn't there uh before the events right no not a, no only like seconds before you fought each other yeah was that yeah. i have yeah yeah, that's actually, you mentioned the emotional moment between Seth and Mike uh, before their fight. So I want to say to everyone that actually that didn't make the final cut. Uh, yeah. It was it was very emotional, actually. But we, we decided, I spoke to Mike about it, to Seth, and we discussed whether I should put it on or not. But but uh, we decided, like, yeah, let's just sk uh, stay with the main script. But yeah, the, it was like... Uh, thing is that it was not easy for them to fight each other because they're such good friends and they had to go all, all out so it was more difficult than it appears on the screen but they did yeah. they had a great fight that was awesome yeah yeah uh how fun was it jeff to fool us <laughs> that these guys are fighters did you have a did you enjoy and have a blast yeah it didn't quite go to script so like okay go uh, the big white guy yeah so he's very muscular and so what i actually wanted to do was give him the shirt get him to take off his shirt flex a little bit and put his other one on um and so that didn't kind of work out so i, I thought that would have been pretty funny and i like the fact that Hala was just there like staring at everyone yeah like, that angrily. was scary. and i was yeah. like yeah that, that was really cool like that's what i want him to do but seth sort of uh, blew that out of the water by going straight up to him and sort of addressing it with him and i was like oh. like i wanted him just to sit there and just grunt and nod and not really say anything and not not be personable yeah. angry guy but um no it went well like i just again I, I wanted you guys to feel nervous and, and i'm sure you did, yeah, I did. That. and i think this would have taken it to another level and that's what i want for me I definitely 100 percent. yeah yeah i just wanted you to when you come around that corner just to have that fear in you that hey who am i going to fight and how am i going to fight them yeah no it 100 worked because as you said like it, it was intim not, not intimidating but it was intense to fight everyone like the guys i knew already but we knew each other so it was like okay i kind yeah. of feel seth i know seth we fought on the bus and i trust him but then uh, a guy i don't know and who's super big that was very scary so yeah this this fight by the way yeah, Seth just really went with that punch and I got knocked back. But at the very moment, at the very last moment when I turned on, I was like, okay, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go swinging. And it worked the best. And that was yeah. when I learned, okay, I need to just go crazy. <laughs> it landed some shots. Like, it was good. It was a good exchange. And yeah, you should be happy with that. I see uh, Jesse Enkamp is also in the chat. Hello, Jesse. Good to see you. Uh, oh, yeah, Seth is writing, you landed a great love hook in there. Thank you. You still won, but I'm glad I, you know, you see, you should see the other guy. You know, that was that moment. Uh, so that's uh, Mike. It's funny because Mike wanted to go full out and then he does that and Jeff ducks at the same moment. He really yeah. like goes hard. Like I, I, that's the reason I put the same uh, frame twice. Yeah. But he's like, who even like landing the sound? And this is this is where I talk about the the judging, right? Yeah. Um, look at where I'm standing compared to where Ramsey's standing. These shots are missing. None of these punches land. Oh yeah. He hit the yeah. ball very hard with his head there, Jeff. Um, like his head hit the wall hard. It doesn't do it justice. So Mike landed an up kick. Jeff went face first into the wall. Um. 
Jeff got the takedown, and Jeff landed one shot there. I think it might have been an elbow. I can't remember. So it was like 2-2. Two, two. Uh, dominant position doesn't matter. So at that stage, the damage given was even in my book. So that's why I still stand by that was a draw. Granted, if it was an MMA match, Jeff had yeah. dominant position, but it's not an MMA match. So, yeah. Uh, when I was editing that and I was listening to you guys discussing that it was a draw, I was also on your side. I was like, I can definitely see how this was a draw. But then, you know, it, it happened what happened. And everybody, most of, like, nobody had a problem with that in comments. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, Ramsey made the right call. But I guess, I think that's because everyone is, or most people are thinking in regards to combat sports. And, yeah, so they're not thinking in regards to self-defense as much. Like, you noticed the head, Jeff's head banging into the wall. Nobody else even noticed it. So, no, that's probably the hardest hit. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring up big sound that was cool that was that was funny i think they hit the wall a little bit too much at that time but um it, <laughs> mike it was... said that he picked it up and seth i think you picked it up as well that uh it was too rhythmical i didn't <laughs> yeah. so, seth is writing if it was a draw i could have won i know seth i thought about it too so yeah. many close calls <laughs> yeah uh but yeah so, i wanted, I, wanted um, I felt really bad for ramsey um and i wanted him to be a part of it not just an afterthought like i wanted to include him in it so um that's why i asked him to come judge and yeah so it was good to have him on board too a lot of people in the comments appreciate that too so although there were different opinions i think yeah it turned out good yeah there was some that said oh it's was a little biased having him there but not really like yeah. he didn't race them. yeah uh, that's my fight with uh, Jeff Chan. Yeah, I was like, I was, yeah, I was just like, I learned my lesson. I need to be aggressive. And that helped actually, because if I would be in the fighting mode, like uh, sports versus sports, I would be like, shit, this guy knows more than me. He's better. But when I was aggressive, I was like, screw this. I'm just going to go all out. I also like this edit. Uh, it turned out, I think it turned out nice with a, with a song and, you know, these blackouts. Anyway, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I was happy with my performance. Even though I lost, I, I wasn't in a moment, I wasn't in a situation where I'm like, oh yeah, he kicked my ass. I was like, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm happy with the way it went. Yeah, you're hanging 20 seconds, so it's good. Hmm. Yeah, that was a really nice takedown from Jeff. Yeah. And then you got a reversal, like it was unconventional, but you got it. Yeah, I was like, I was not going to let him be on the top. And I'm like doing, I'm putting it all in. So I would just, he would not stay there. And I thought about throwing him over. He did a very good job at maintaining his balance. But I was planning to just drop him over. Yeah. And then this is my mistake. I disconnect and he has the, uh, he has the habit whenever you disconnect to strike. Very good yeah. habit. And then that was one of the key points for him taking the round. And that that's but, where a lot. I liken this to Lomachenko, the way he fights. Like, what I've noticed about him is he has really short arms for his weight division. So if he gets in very close, he can still throw effective punches, whereas a taller person needs more distance. When you and Jeff engaged, you were close enough that you were at the end of his punch, but he wasn't at the end of yours. So that's why I think he landed that better shot on you. So it was just distance thing. Yeah, it was very close. All the fights were, were close. Yeah, it's true. Like none of the fights were uh, fights where somebody completely dominated, and we we're like, "Oh, too bad for that guy." <laughs> it's like yeah. they were all good. They were all good performances. They all deserved to. Yeah, uh, like uh, the final fight. Yeah. yeah, for season two, this kick that Seth does, we know he pulled the kick, and yeah. like he, you pull a kick, it enables other people to grab it. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, people don't. Like, let him go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, you know, MMA, there's no helmet and things and you're getting kicked in the face. Here we've got a helmet, so let him go. Let him go. So there's no doubt. So, like, yeah. if Seth followed through there, I don't know, it's his good friend and things like that. So he, he's, you know, probably didn't want to. But had he done that, Mike wouldn't have got that takedown and it could have been more conclusive. So... Yeah, there's another point right there um, that Seth could have got. There's two points right there, two points win. Uh, wait, so he, he got two points for a draw. So if he would have won this, he would have got three points. So he would have been a draw with Jeff. 
Yeah, and then the the previous one that I scored a draw, but it like yeah, there were many moments yeah. where Seth could have won, and I'm I'm yeah. glad that you know Jeff saw it that way too. But also Seth made a good point. You know, it's like this is the way it turned out, so Jeff yeah. is the winner. Period. But but it, it was, was it was interesting. Sorry, good. Graceful that like he wasn't arguing yeah. that he was he was happy with it all. Yeah, yeah, no, it was very cool, and it was interesting discussion too, just to sit there by a table. Uh, again, the editing didn't do it justice, but we sat there for like 30 minutes just talking about every single detail of that fight. And yeah. we weren't just like, okay, whatever. We're like, we were really digging into the whole subject of whether it's a draw or a win. Yeah. yeah. And the final fight, uh, the lounges. Uh, did, what, did you, what did you expect when... I guess, okay, let's, there's going to be two fights. I'm going to be first. Uh, then Jeff versus Seth. What did you expect versus what happened? Um, besides I, me getting a sucker punch. <laughs> yeah, the the thing that sort of threw how the I got a he got a better punch on me than I did. But anyway, yeah, sorry. No, he was pissed there. But um, the lounges just toppled over, and I know someone in the comments said I shouldn't have had the lounges, but. I, you know, I didn't want him to topple over. I wanted him to stand the ground. Like, um, I'm just thinking at my house, I think the lounges are against the wall and most houses that I go to. That's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. Again, it's it's yeah. inconclusive. I like that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> we could put it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was an interesting moment for me because, uh, yeah, I thought, like, you know, I'm hitting him more, so I was fairly confident that it's going in my favor. But... But this is actually how I lost my first BGD tournament. I was standing up while I had my arm in between the legs. Yep. And I memorized that for my entire life because, you know, I lost that fight. Yeah. And when Mike was doing that, I was like, holy crap, you know, I, this is familiar. I know how this, how this is happening. And I didn't even know if I'm going to pull it off. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then it was also like last seconds. Uh, as soon as I pulled it off, then it was time. So it was cool. And then I wanted to also emphasize, like, yes, people said I'm going to suck. And I I did. So that was cool. And the fact that Mike was so pissed off that he lost, it just meant it meant something to him. And I like True. that. I, I like his competitiveness. And yeah. I know people criticize people for having an ego, but it makes you competitive. Like, you know, it makes you want to win. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, uh, this is a bit broader subject but uh, i came from like a spiritual background my aikido school was very spiritual and i was all about like oh winning doesn't matter that's kind of the aikido philosophy but then it has pros to not you know caring about the win but also it has uh, cons as well and i think yeah. being competitive caring about things being passionate that's also something very powerful and i think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are inspired by mike even though he did not you know get one of the top places a lot of people were like oh mike is the best and and I think yeah, he inspired many people, especially like smaller guys, older yeah. guys. I, I think, yeah, his passion definitely influenced people. Yep. And this is the final fight. Seth was winning it, right? You would have called Seth if, if there was Seth, no armbar. Seth had him. Like he was there. People criticized me for that, putting my yeah. arm on the, the lounge. Yeah. Uh, Seth had him. I just, yeah. He was like a second away from victory. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so crazy that it happened this way. Like, yeah. last second. It's so dramatic. It's just like, you couldn't script it better. Like, this no. this, this, this almost seems like, this is so good, it must have been scripted. And it wasn't. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I really yeah. hope we'll have these moments in Season 2 as well. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, Seth was really sad. Like, 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 I mentioned that before, but here I included like 10 seconds of him saying he's sad about not getting second place he was like for 10 minutes he was just talking about that and i was like i felt so bad for him he really wanted that first place so i was and i respect him for that yeah thank yeah you. so i think it's great uh, such a nice nice moment of celebrating jeff as the winner we hid the belt he wrapped it up in towels so that we didn't let anyone know like the bad guys the bad guys the attackers Nobody got to know who's, who won, uh, and yeah, we really did our best to protect the secret. Yeah. yeah. I was happy with, like, the shoestring budget that 
that we did it on. I think we did something great. Um, yeah, I, I just think with an additional budget, um, the, the amount of things that we could do is, yeah, sky's the limit. Yeah. Actually, Ranton just wrote that he's about to go, so I'll see if I can still get him for a tiny moment. Uh, if you still have a moment, I'm sending the link to him. Uh, maybe not. Ah, shit. Ranton can't join us anymore. Too bad. Uh, and this is Jesse's cameo. Actually, it was Aaron's idea, one of the attackers, yeah, yeah. the right hand yep. man of uh, Jeff. It was a really cool idea. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, we were the store. this this is a funny moment. This is actually what happened. I was I was at Jiroka since shouting on kangaroos. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that's a nice way to finish up the whole thing. Uh, so just to let everyone know, uh, we still have a few moments. I know it's late on Jeff's end, and it's quite something to talk for three hours <laughs> without stopping, but. <laughs> We still want to open up uh, the platform for questions and answers. Uh, we'll answer at least a few. So now is your chance to write them down and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can before we before you pass out. Uh, also, Jesse, just in case, if you're still around and if you feel like jumping in to say hi, just let me know, I'll send you the link. Uh, but other than that, we'll just do a QA. and uh, I guess before we get the questions, uh, just final thoughts or summary of my experience you know as i finished editing the last episode i was exhausted and and it was like very hardly enjoyable anymore because i was yeah. just so tired but even still when i put together this the last episode and put the credits and you know the the emotional music and it was kind of a cool moment i was i was leaning back and looking and i thought wow this is kind of special it's 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 cool we pulled it off uh, what, what was going for your mind when the whole thing finished um, I, I was kind of, I don't know. I was hoping I wanted to go longer. I just, it was, it was kind of sad in a way, but good. Like I was, it was bittersweet. You know, I was glad that we saw it and it was so successful and, and a lot of the things we set out to achieve, we were able to do. Um, I was really happy with that. And then just, I guess, um, uh, the response to it and how that, you know now season two like we have to do it like that was basically after how it was taken it, it's it's a must so yeah I, I just i i was really happy with it i was really happy with all aspects of it and you know are there little things that we could change here and there maybe one or two but um yeah i just think like that that's a good thing about self-defense it's so easy to come up with different ideas and scenarios because there's so many elements that you can add to it and you can add two elements together, three elements together. It's, it's, it's simple and we can take it wherever, you know, I, I'm looking forward to this season. I've got some really good ideas and then even season three, when we go overseas and then we can start to add firearms and things like that to it. Um, mm. There's so many places we can take it. Yeah. That, that's what I appreciate about you and want to put on record that, as I said, some people are like, oh, you're probably going to have the uh, trouble of coming up with wonderful challenges, like challenges as good as this one. I'm like, you don't know Jeff Phillips. Like, <laughs> you're filled with brilliant ideas. You, you you haven't even reached your potential in season one whatsoever. So, yeah, I'm yeah. Excited. And then also we can coordinate this time. I'm, I, I can get involved as well and we can bounce yeah. back ideas. I think it's yep. going to be yep. great. Definitely. Okay, I'll bring up some questions. So there's one uh, asking if we will consider Swalbury, and he's uh, he has a smaller channel, but he's somewhat known between the martial arts community, formerly known as Red Chucks. Uh, I just first of all, I just wanted to say that it's, it's people are, and I understand everyone is passionate about USDC, and they're like, oh, you should get this and you should get that because they want it, but not everyone considers how hard. And you spoke about that, Jeff, before how hard it is to get someone to sign up for this and to get them come come over it's scheduling issues like so many things are involved into getting someone over so it's not just about and also we have to make sure that that person uh would want to do it and then also their audience would be interested they would watch the episode there's so much that goes into it so unfortunately it's not as easy as just like oh let's get this guy but get this guy so 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 small reen but checks is not yet on the list but who knows the future will show 
uh, you're Jeff, you're checking who that is. <laughs> no, no, I was just looking because I saw a couple of questions that, um, same one that that's occurring. I don't know who it is. And I saw the, that particular individual as asked probably about 20 times to have Wolverine in it. I, I'm, yeah. I'm... <laughs> okay. It's like a super fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Well, what I was uh, looking at, yeah. a lot of, oh, you go, here's a question. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, this is a common question. So I thought we might tackle that because I try to speak for it, but, but you have a more clear opinion about it. Female participants in season two. Uh, yeah. can you explain the, the logic behind that, Jeff? Um, I, I just, and that's what I just Googled and I just have one name to put up Leah Thomas, the, the trans swimmer that's, uh, competing against women. Um, the uproar and the things that people are, are claiming, you know, over that, um, I just think it'll rub people the wrong way. Just imagine the bus scenario where you guys are hitting a female as hard as you can and, like, it's not going to be palatable for the general public, you mm -hmm. know. It has to be an all-female cast or a no-female cast, in my opinion. Like, people don't want to see a guy hitting a girl, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah so for that reason we, we can't just have one in there i just yeah i just can't see it working mm -hmm. okay uh other question how far are you planning to take this serious it's it's kind of a it's hard to s know exactly what the question is is meaning but my the way i understand it i think we're gonna go season by season like we weren't even a hundred percent sure about season two uh i think jeff you were more kind of like let's do it and i was more like oh my god i'm so exhausted from <laughs> editing yeah. the season one and so yeah. many finances went into it that i was like let me see let me let me think about it but then once i announced the crowdfunding and it was successful quite early that definitely motivated me and gave me gave me the feeling like okay we we, should, we, we and so many people wanted season two that i yeah. we had this conversation you and i jeff where i was like okay you know what we have to do it but then i don't want to we're already kind of talking about season three, make, organizing it somewhere else, etc. cetera. Uh, I still can't say I'm like, oh, season three is confirmed. Like I want to yeah. take it step by step, see how season two does, because sometimes people are excited, but you know, they're not necessarily always engaging and falling through the excitement. So first I want to see how season two does, but we definitely have ideas for more seasons. Uh, Jeff has the brilliant mind of coming up with these challenges. I have ideas how to deliver the editing even in a better way. So I think we have a lot of potential. Uh, it's likely that more seasons will happen, but we take it step by step, season by season. I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, same. I just think let's go one at a time and, and see if they're successful. Like we don't want to sit there and, you know, predict we're going to do 10 seasons and we get to season three and people are bored of it or something, or it's just not feasible financially or anything like that. So yeah, we just go one season at a time and see where it takes us. And yeah, like I said, there's there's so many so many ways that we can take this. So we could easily do ten seasons, uh, make them all unique, and um, yeah, it's just a matter of if that's what the people want, then that's what the people will get. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting question, and it's definitely for you, Jeff. Uh, how did season one compare to the tournaments organized with your guys? And just to I'll, I'll give some context for everyone in case somebody doesn't know that Jeff, you organize very similar tournaments for your guys yearly, and we just put a different, you know, uh, participants in in this time. But I don't know what was the different. What were the differences for you? Um, this season was a lot safer than when my guys do it. Oh wow! For, okay. Yeah, when we do the shank tank, we don't have uh, the people wearing the chest protectors, and you should have hmm. seen the and the the. <laughs> Caused by the textures, like, and they broke skin and things through shirts. Um, our King of the West, like how we padded up areas, there was no padding. It was always concrete. Um, we padded up the people, not the, the area, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's very similar. It's just, I think I wanted to make sure, like my guys are pretty good. You know, I, I probably pushed the envelope in terms of safety a little bit more with them, but that's because they respond to it and that's what they want. And mm. I didn't want to throw you guys into like something where there's a really good chance of you getting hurt. 
Um, so I was a little bit more careful this time, but yeah, pretty similar, uh, very similar. Looks a little bit different, you know, like some of the strategies and things, but um, yeah, very similar. Is it as intense though? Because I mean, we, you know, we were just like living and breathing that for five days and challenge by challenge. Is the uh, intensity similar? The, so if I go back to the shank tank, our shank tank was a lot harder because the people who competed also had to be the attackers. Mm. So not only like the last time we did it, I think we had six, we had 12 people participating. We split them up into six and six. Now six were going at a moderate pace. The moderate pace meant they couldn't strike or anything. All they had to do was try and stab that person. Mm. Uh, MJ's written, Jeff abuses us, send help. <laughs> um, she had a go in that. So, and then there's the nice. other where you can strike, kick or whatever, plus stab. And um, you as a participant has to be a stabber. So not only do you get five people attack you, you have to attack five other people. And so, you know, you had four 20 seconds. They had 10, 20 seconds and stuff like that. But, but granted, it was on one day as opposed to three a day kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and we, we don't have the... I guess the sponsorship from from SMAI. So we just use what we got. Some people didn't use any protective gear and it was different. So hmm. uh, yeah, I think this one was just a lot more professional. Nice. Yeah. Uh, quick questions directed to me. When uh, I press in on pressure fight scenarios, did I use any discipline to take control, falling back to grappling, uh, for example? So I think it's hard to say. I think it's, a lot of things are automatic. They just, the body just goes for it. And I think I am more experienced in grappling than in striking. And maybe that's why I jump on it more. But also I just feel safer maybe with grappling because, you know, you're more tactile. You feel the person can control the person more versus just striking the person. I'm not sure. But it seems like I was more going into grappling and sometimes throwing out fists. But it's all automatic. Like, uh, Jeff, I guess you have probably the same experience, right? It's it's there's not a lot of like, oh, I'm gonna be grappling or I'm gonna be striking. It just goes. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. I kind of wanted to have is prior to each event, interview the person to go, what what's your strategy going uh, in? Yeah, and and then film them afterwards, going, well, that strategy went out the window, or <laughs> how it planned, or because you just go into um, autopilot and. I'm not sure if I'd say muscle memory because, you know, like the videos of the judo, judo fights that, that happen at judo tournaments and there's no judo in it. So their muscle memory that they've been training doesn't appear. We resort to something else. Like it's, it's almost primitive, yeah. you know. And if you are able to control yourself in those circumstances, and that's where fighting helps. If you had a lot of fights, it's not as emotional. And then so if you can control that, you can be in a more controlled state, you know, mentally going into it, you're more likely to do something. But, um, yeah, unless you've experienced it a lot, you just resort to, yeah, Aaron's just written brawl and more. So that's one of our modules, mm -hmm. brawl and more. Um, that's basically what you do. You brawl and more. Most people just resort to that. So, yeah, it's just a, it's a weird phenomena, but it happens. Yeah. A uh, quick question. Will Gabby sing a theme song for season two? She was actually suggesting something like that. I'm not yeah. sure it's going to happen, but uh, who knows? Maybe. But uh, just kudos to my wife, Gabby. I think it was really cool to include her in the zombie event. And I think she she was shining at that and brought in yeah. some female inch plans. So, so that was really cool. Yeah, she added a lot. But that, was, that was awesome. She did really well. Yeah. Uh, so... I don't see a lot of questions popping up, uh, so and we've spent here a lot of time already. So I think maybe we'll just say some final words and wrap up. Uh, so maybe a quick description of your vision. Jesse Sankham says a theme song would be amazing. Uh, some final thoughts for season two or vision for season two from you, Jeff. Uh, my vision for season two? Yeah. Uh Thinking of, uh, and this is one way we can go into, you know, multiple seasons if, is if we have a theme. Um, so I have one in mind that I'm going to run by you and I'm not going to say. Yeah. Uh, which that would enable us to do so many more. So a particular theme or a particular mm. environment or setting where it's all based around. 
and I've got one in mind and I can do up some of the building to look exactly how we want it mm. and it'll just make the scenarios and everything else like another level. So, and like I was saying, you know, if we have that additional funding um, where we can spend a bit of money this time to like, you know, I said it earlier, we managed to pull this off with just things I had lying around the gym. We didn't have to buy a whole lot more equipment as mm. such, you know, belts and other things and uniforms. Yes. But in terms of like zombie, I, I had it, all that stuff in a box um, in the gym because we've done it before. Yeah. Now if we go out and buy specific things for it, you know, we can take it to another level. And like I was saying about um, hide and go stab, if we can get that soft play furniture and put soft things all around, so now they have weapon or not weapons, barriers and things like that. Improvised use, weapons. Yeah. It'll change it. And there's those little subtle changes, we can do a whole lot. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's heaps we can do. Heaps, heaps, heaps. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, I'll say my final words in, in a moment as well, but uh, there's the thing scrolling on the bottom. Uh, the crowdfunding for season two is still open. And as I said at the beginning, but some of you jumped in later, uh, although we reached our goal, which I'm super excited about and very grateful for all of you, uh, it's still the bare minimum we need. Uh, the more we will connect, collect, the greater things we can pull off. So it's still open if you feel like supporting and getting to see this uh, series earlier than everyone else as a result and having other perks, then you can still consider jumping in and supporting the crowdfunder. But uh, still, season two is definitely happening. And my thoughts, I keep saying that because I just like that that concept, but uh, my vision for season two is, as I said, like Terminator 1, Terminator 2. Alien, aliens. Maybe I'm old now by now that not everybody even knows what I'm talking about. But those are two great movies with even better sequels. And what I mean by that is that my vision is to take what we already did and just elevate elevate it to the next level, make it even better, learn from my mistakes from season one, uh, have even in a way like even more exciting participants. I think the first group was amazing, but but still we have like uh, even higher level fighters. Uh, more of competitors uh, and uh, yeah just essentially I'm I'm devoting myself to directing completely co-hosting together with you Jeff I'm going to be more involved in planning as well because for season one I couldn't do it because I was a contender I couldn't know too much so I think just combining our forces and with the experience we got already with additional funding we're getting season two is definitely going to be at the next level and that's our plan and that's what's going to happen yeah, definitely. And uh, also, just to throw it out there, I see MJ is active in the comments. Just want to say thank you so much, MJ, as well. She was another star of the show, uh, elevated everything to the next level. A lot of people want to see her back. Hopefully, we will. Hopefully, the fact that she's MT, not MJ anymore, will not <laughs> get in the way. <laughs> Jeff, is, is MJ coming back? Is it official? I believe, believe so. Okay. Yeah. It'll be yeah. It'll be good. I should be now, so it all depends if her husband lets her so yeah but he's cool so i'm pretty sure he will yeah cool and also about the other participants i know jesse's even though he's cooking and he's busy he's still around just wanted to say i'm super excited to have him i know a lot of people are excited uh ranton levy uh jordan jeff coming back again and kevin is joining us the basketball player i'm super excited to see how he does so much stuff is going to happen so much exciting things so so it's going to be a blast it's definitely going to be a yeah. blast yeah. And even the, um, the seminars, um, if we do the seminar thing again, yeah. like I'm really that again. Uh, I can see Aaron's in the comments as well. So he was a massive part of it as well. Um, yeah, there's just, there's so many people that contribute to making this happen. And yeah, like it's, um, yeah, the sky's the limit. Yeah, true. And uh, also to, to use that chance as well. Uh, the attackers are definitely the unsung heroes and they, they took a lot for this event. So I can't express my gratitude for all of them uh, being part of this and making it such a great experience. So, yeah. And one thing I want to say is the the rugby player thing, they're not rugby players, they're Western combatives, part of our team. That's, that's where they've done all their fighting and learned to fight. And so I want to stop that uh, rugby player reference and call it the Western. <laughs> Westcom guys, you know, that's, that's who right. they are. Yeah. Um, for example, Adrian, who gets a lot of, um, you know, positive publicity on this, uh, when he first walked in the gym, like he wasn't very good. 
And one of our trainers, Ben's worked really hard with him and now he's an absolute animal. So yeah, full credit to our guys and our little crew out there. Cause that's why I stress so much about having it, you know, back at our places because our guys are so good. You know, my, my crew is so good. Like I'm useless without them. You know, I need them uh, to be a part of it and factoring the facility and all the rest of it. It just makes sense. Yeah. And also to actually, uh, I can reveal part of the information. I won't spoil it yet. We are in discussion with the self-defense expert who's who's quite known in the self-defense uh, circles who may join us. We're still uh, looking forward to confirm it. But he, for him, getting to know that the guys are trained and this is what they do is a big uh, pro for joining. Like once he learned about that, he was like, okay, this makes it so much better instead of just getting random guys and just, you know, just having them attack. So it's a huge privilege to have trained guys uh, be part of this. Yep. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, we'll wrap up here. Thank you, everyone, as well. Uh, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, and thank you very much for supporting and all your love for Season 1. That's making Season 2 possible. And we'll definitely keep this thing going and keep announcing uh, awesome things, uh, new contenders, new details. It's going to be exciting. So thank you, thank you very much. And we're going to announce the, the ultimate self-defense experience soon as well. True. Before we finish, tell about that. We keep not telling about it. So we're looking at uh, opening up to the public um, over a weekend where we do three events per day. So if you're watching all this going, oh, I'd love to test my skills in that, we're going to give people the opportunity to do that. So on weekends, um, we'll set some dates, but we'll have a flyer come out within this week uh, that basically states what events will be on. Some will be some of the new events, uh, we won't pit you to fight each other. So, you know, if six people decide to come along, you're not going to fight one another. It'll be mostly the ones where there's people, there's attackers like circle drill and whatnot. And so if you want to experience it for yourself, um, stay tuned because you'll have that opportunity. So that's what nice. we'll end. We'll still announce it fairly soon. And thank you, Jeff, for, for being the huge part of this. And no worries. Thank you. Uh, everything. Combined power. <laughs> cool. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day and until next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.